All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the NA Major Qualifier. The winner of today is will be inserted into the bracket with TSM, Oxygen, and Dark Zero. Three teams are left, four teams entered. Mirage are currently out. The game that's about to go down right now is going to be our second elimination match between the Sonics and Disrupt Gaming. But before we jump into that, quick word to our sponsors. I'm going to give a big shout out to Predator. No, I'm not a shield. No, I'm not a sellout. They didn't give me big walls of cash. But the one thing I will say, I've been using this this entire weekend and it is phenomenal. I have the Triton 700. This bad boy has an i7 ninth generation. Okay, we, we fancy over here. I have an overclock 2080. And like I said, I actually use this laptop. I'll put it to good use, okay? So there you have it. Jesse, what you got over there, man? I got the Helio 700. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, my stream dies a lot on my main PC to watch the live feed. So I actually watch it really? on this laptop. Yeah, I use this all the time during our broadcasts and, and it's more reliable than my main PC. So I love it. Yeah, it's a lifesaver. Hey, Jesse, do me a favor. Can we point and laugh at Jacob since he doesn't have one yet? And he doesn't even have a sandwich this time. He doesn't even have, he just looks oh, sad. I don't even have a sandwich. So, you, Jacob, <laughs> this, this is your first time doing tier one, man. You got to put in the work before you know you get the good stuff. But let's jump into the action. Um, Today is going to be quite crazy. This is going to be a rematch. And the last time we saw these two teams play, like Lycan said, it was, it was pure fire. It was crazy. But let's jump right into the first team that we're going to discuss. It's going to be Disrupt Gaming. And stage one... They weren't as they weren't even half as good as they were now, and I'm I'm saying that with complete respect. Um, Nick's got replaced from the team. He was an IGL. They brought in Jen I know another rookie. Yes, you hear rookies a lot because they are taking over the league. And speaking of that, it's going to be NJR. But Jesse, mm -hmm. talking about disrupt gaming, how can they fix their game against the Sonics from last night and take it into this match to where they can come out with the win this time around? Right, well, I think maps are going to be a big difference compared to what we saw uh, in the last matchup. You know, there were some maps that DG really just did struggle on. I hope they avoid some of those coming into this new map end uh, phase. But the other big thing is going to be avoiding letting that um, opening pick spiral away from them, right? Oh, yeah. That's something we talked about in the pregame of the last matchup where Sonics really did a great job of capitalizing off of that opening pick. Disrupt, I don't, they're doing a good job of getting the opening pick like relatively high amount of the time, but when they don't get that opening pick, because nobody's going to get the opening pick 100% of the time, you can't let it spiral. You can't let Sonics identify those weak points in your defense and totally capitalize off of it. If somebody dies, somebody's got to fill his spot. you got to make sure you're always watching every angle. If you don't have enough people, you got to watch the right angles. It's a tough job, but Disrupt can do it, and that's what I'm looking for. I think there's a significant stat out there that says um, Shuttle, most of his kills come from winning rounds, which yeah. is absolutely insane. So it's not about how you get the kill, it's what you do after the kill. And Jacob, you liked what you saw from District Gaming last night, but there was a lot you didn't like and you thought they needed to correct that for this matchup, specifically for this rematch. What is that? Well, we did hear Evil Waffle talk at the very end of the Mirage game about some of the things that they were trying to do to adjust, but yeah. overall, the biggest thing to take away from Disrupt's game plan has always been their reliance on pushing in literally within the last 30 to 20 seconds. We keep on talking about the forced 20 second meta that currently exists within Siege. They like to rely on that a lot. That's their fallback plan for if they don't think that they have nearly as much map control, they rely on drones and intel, and then they go in guns blazing and try to get as many frags as they can, maybe a plan. Disrupt's not nearly the most objective favorite team that we see. In the NAL, they opt to go and run and gun 90% of the time we see them play. I think that's worked to a certain extent, but yeah. they need to do something different. It might come down, Jesse's right, to map selection overall, because if they go to the same battlegrounds as they did against SQ last night, we could see the same result and Sonics might win again. And there, there's a point you brought up, their last dash, and within the final 20 seconds, and them having an issue clearing roamers, especially above on specific maps like Cafe. But there's a graphic I want to bring up before we transition into Sonics. We're going to highlight a player. We talked a lot about Shadow yesterday, but this time around, we're giving praise to the main man, NJR, as the player to watch for Disrupt Gaming and for Sonics. We're going to see. But as that graphic comes up on your screen, Jesse, yeah. I want you to tell me what NJR, excuse me, what NJR does so well for this roster. And tell me a little bit more about Slevin. 
Listen, I mean, NJR is a big fragging kid, right? I mean, he came onto this roster as a bit of a young gun, a little bit of an anomaly. People didn't really know what to expect, uh, but he really carried them through stage one. And I think his impact has fallen off a little bit in stage two. You know, people talk about how Shuttle has kind of come up and replaced NJR as the star player on Disrupt Gaming, but NJR can still gun, and nobody's taken that away from him. You can see his match totals yeah. from the last time they played against uh, the Sonics. 29-25, you know, considering they lost that matchup, that's a pretty solid stat line. Um, and he's really just been very consistent in his fragging, you know, not always carrying the team, but always on the scoreboard. And that's what counts. Actually, Jesse, I wanted to point this out. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the stats page on CGG. Mm -hmm. NGR is number one with KD differential. He's a positive 20. Yeah, Guess crazy. who's in second place? Jay and I know, his teammate, <laughs> positive 15. Guess who's in third place? Shadow positive 14. If you take a look at the leaderboards, there are one, two, three, four categories for Distro Gaming they lead. There's only six of them total. That is, that is just crazy. But talking about Sonics, Jacob, we saw Slepin on the screen. We see the great things he does for his team, but it doesn't take just one player to be successful in the game, especially against the world champs. Distro Gaming, they're not pushovers either. What do the Sonics have to do when ha how bad do they need to wake up right now because everything rides on this see they faced ssg the reigning world champions a five stack of arguably some of the greatest players that north america probably the world has ever seen yeah. so if you're gonna take your lumps it would be against a squad like that regardless of what sort of slump that ssg have been on recently i'd argue if they decide that that's kind of a game that they can shake off it's not nearly that big of a deal maybe if they said maybe we can like prepare to go against disrupt in this other elimination game sooner rather than expected if the, if you're in that kind of mentality and you say we're gonna face disrupt we kind of expected to be here already then you can fall back a lot on what you did last night because at the end of the day even if it came down to the wire if it was an overtime match point or not you still made it work you still beat dg at one point before and their confidence has to be reverse of what it was last night if dg wants to win i honestly think sonics despite the loss are stolen the driver's seat right now jacob it was such a close game too it was so exciting. though i know so excited but these two teams are about to go to war but before we jump into that game we need to know what they're playing jesse yeah you're the you're the resident big brain you're the resident map expert keep the on reminding center. him how smart he is Veli. make me feel inadequate <laughs> jesus Jacob, you're the new guy you're just gonna sit back and be quiet real quick right jesse let yeah. him know that this is your segment run it <laughs> okay okay this is a really important um thing for disrupt gaming Love because they're Jacob. not great on a lot of these maps Clubhouse is the exception. Disrupt are really good at Clubhouse. If you watched during the break, I had that video going on. You know, they had a really great time uh, on Clubhouse. They've got some really great strategies as well. Cafe for the Sonics. They played this in their last best of three. Um, and it is a really strong map for the Sonics. They did win it. It was 15 rounds, but they did manage to take it. And I did like their play. And then Villa. Man, we keep talking about Sonics on Villa. They're so good. And I get they just lost it. But that was 7-5 against the world champions. I still feel like that is an incredibly strong Ooh. map for the Sonics. I'm kind of shocked Disrupt let this go through. They've already lost the Sonics twice in the NAL to this map. I'm a little bit sad that this got through. All right, Jesse, you said I usually ask Jacob for his prediction first, but I'm going to turn to you this time. Looking at Switching these rosters. This, this right here is their most important game in all the brackets so far. Mm -hmm. Who's walking away with that W, Jesse? Uh, I'm thinking Disrupt have to win it in two if they're going to. I don't expect that. I think that, you know, just Club should go for DG. Cafe will be the toss-up. Sonic's picking it. I'm going to assume they're confident they're going to take it. And then Villa should absolutely go to the way of the Sonics as well. 2-1 okay. for the Sonics. DG, don't love the way this map fan went out for them. Sounds strong. Jacob, this is it. Elimination time. Who's going home? It's been the world of safe bets this whole weekend, hasn't it? I don't think any prediction I've had has been incorrect thus far whereas i don't think jesse had the right call last time everyone boo jesse in chat if you have a second <laughs> i'm gonna try to see if i can't keep this 100 percent prediction streak going though i don't think disrupts got it in the tank i think sq can ride the wave of momentum even though they lost okay. in the last round that's a pretty darn good scrim going into a game against disrupt the only downside is they'll have to go right back into the grand final in a little bit but that's after they get through dg i'm pretty sure sonics take this sonics take it all right, so before we toss this in, I want to ask you a favor one last time. We always have community polls. You're going to hear about it after the game. 
Make sure you follow us on our social pages. Twitter is always big, and I love the content we put out there. A lot of highlights and a lot of updates. Make sure you just keep in check with what's happening with Rainbow Six Siege. But ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. The game to decide who goes to the finals and who goes home. Sonics and Disrupt Gaming. Casters, take it away. Thank you very much, Veli. And once again, we are just those few moments away from getting into our penultimate matchup of the qualifier here. The Sonics going up against Disrupt Gaming, possibly for a rematch that we just saw happen earlier today. If the Sonics make it through, and a chance for Disrupt to once again prove themselves against the world champions if we end up seeing Disrupt take the cake here and prove their way into the grand final. Stokes, get your opening thoughts on this series. Oh, it's going to be an absolute banger in between these two. They're neck and neck, but I do believe that the Sonics edge out Disrupt just a bit, and I'm going to lean on exactly what Jesse said. It's the map pool for me, John. The map pool is not really strong for Disrupt here. If they're going to do it, exactly what our man said on the desk, they're going to do it in two. But that cafe coming through, they haven't won it a single time in recent history. It's not looking good for Disrupt right now. They've come very, very close, and you have to wonder what's the method behind the madness with going back to this map so many times. What exactly is the thing that they feel makes them worthy of being able to uh, to push themselves forward? And on top of that, of course, we want to know from you guys, your our community poll question, which one of these players is going to be able to step up? We've already seen them both go rogue in the past. Now he'll step up more in this matchup. Is it going to be Shuttle? or easily go ahead over to our Twitter account at R6 Esports NA and submit your vote. We'll have the results a little bit later on during the show and see if you guys were right. I feel like both of them are hood up right now, but Shadow's got the glasses, which I feel like puts him at an advantage, especially from yesterday. We saw everyone adopting those uh, onto their faces and just looked really good overall. So Shadow, thank you for making all of our talent look better yesterday. Uh, you know, especially Kicks. He just looks so damn good with those glasses, but enough delay, folks. Let's put everything aside and get down to the nitty gritty. It's Disrupt Gaming versus the Sonics. Who will go on to the best of five to play SSG later on today. Let's find out. Find out indeed, folks. We're going to head in game. Take a look at the bands now. Sonic have the first and final bands that you see at the top there. Disrupt have the two middle ones. Since they'll be starting out on attack. Take a look first at the Sonic's band, which will be coming up here in a second. Taking them a moment to figure it out, but seems they've got their lock on what they want to knock out here, and they are going to remove Sledge, which wow. actually I, I can absolutely see the reasoning for that, personally. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Sledge has a really good effect, especially on like the basement site. You see him utilized a lot inside of the kitchen area. Uh, this is going to be a really, really big problem for Disrupt, mainly because this is not a soft destructor that we see banned ever. He's got one of the lowest ban rates inside of all of the NAL. Maverick going to follow suit, which again, this goes back to how Clubhouse just works. Maverick or Thatcher is always going to be banned here, so... Pretty part for the course in the second one, just the sledge band coming through. Very awkward for Disrupt. Yeah, so more than likely, we're going to see a lot of buck picks to make up for that, of course, as that would be the next best thing you're going to be able to bring to the table. Just a little bit more awkward doing the floor destruction. And most notably, if you do bring the buck, obviously you want all the frag grenades, so a little bit less to worry about in that department. We do see the Valkyrie band making a return. That was something else the Sonic banned out earlier on top of the Wamai ban as well, which is just going to remain a common trend throughout this entire tournament as has been the case for many, many weeks now. So quite an interesting ban phase. It's certainly going to change up the play capability with the Sledge ban being the most obvious one that will certainly throw teams off a little bit. There's the Buck pick immediately coming into the picture. And as far as I can tell, no additional frag grenades coming into the play to make up for the lack of them off of the Sledge. So it's just a lot less that the Sonics have to worry about with regards to that top-down pressure. Yeah, DG want to lean into this, you know, two paired hard breach here, bringing Thermite and Habana, which it's going to be strong, especially with how they're more than likely going to apply it to CCTV. But I would like to see some frag grenades come in here. Uh, the the main problem is, is as you said, since Sledge is off the board, you're going to see Buck the entire time. Buck has some different applications to Clubhouse rather than the, how you handle it with Sledge. So Shuttle's going to be safer in some avenues handling things with Buck rather than Sledge. But obviously not having access to those frag grenades, especially with the amount of utility that the Sonics are bringing, is going to be extremely troublesome. This is exactly why they've banned the Sledge here, John. They're going to be bringing Castle Barricades. We saw a tweet yesterday from Easily saying, hey, we were 
were cooking up in the lab with these castle setups that we saw them utilize only yesterday. This is some fresh stuff coming out here with a lot of utility for this offense to try and get through with minimal soft destruction. But we'll see if they're going to be able to do just that. In the meantime, of course, Super will be free to set up those castle barricades. Barricades that really are going to be tough to take down. You're going to have to commit a lot of the Zofia charges or possibly one of Reed's breaching charges in order to get rid of them. That's going to eat up a little bit of what they were hoping to probably use elsewhere. Now, more than likely, it's going to be the breaching charges that'll take care of those when they absolutely need to, assuming there's no sort of stress situation that's forcing Zofia to use her utility. Um, and that's simply because we're not expecting a whole lot of top-down destruction, which is more than likely where those breaching charges would come into the fold. But away from that, we got the two-man hold in garage right now. Double panel reinforcements on the garage as well, which normally you're going to see at least one of those left soft. No reinforcements or reinforcement denial, I guess you could say, coming in here from the Sonic's roster. So as a result of that, Disrupt make pretty easy work of opening up the breach. Gompy's even going to get rather aggressive going for a little swing out from it. Surprisingly escapes that while taking no damage. But at the same time, no damage is returned onto anyone on Disrupt. This is a completely different way of handling CCTV. That downstairs setup getting, you know, handled in such a different way that they've actually adjusted the reinforcements upstairs like you were talking about. These two now inside of garage, they're playing for the nitro cell from underneath and they want to make sure that these garage players are still allowed to exist. They're simply playing for the breach to be opened and if DG get any pressure in here, they'll just nitro cell them, but NJR with two quick kills. Iconic nips it in the bud though and that needed to be done. NJR on an absolute heat to start us off here i assumed it was going to be the sonics coming out hot but i was completely wrong the conics trade really saves the situation from going completely out of control at a one-man loss the sonics are still in an okay position and it's really just that nothing else beyond that as they still have to deal with the extra man count when disrupt chooses to execute they're going to try and subvert the setup by working their way into cash instead They'll use their second breaching charge to open up the construction wall. Iconic won't be able to do it. Oh, no, never mind. He's got the impacts here. However, it's thrown a little bit too late, and it's thrown a little bit too high as well. The destruction happening lower out still allows for Iconic to move in and take down the player that put the destruction on the wall. However, it's not able to get anything else going. The wall is still open. It's another angle of attack, and that kills only serve to even us up into a 3v3. Also still with over 50 seconds to go here. They start to have a lot of time to play with. J90 is going to capitalize on that now by finding easily, leaving only Super, and we'll scratch that. Just iconic in the fray here now. He's already down at 25 as well. J9 will get one final kill for Disrupt to finish things out, and they take a convincing win here on round number one. And this is what's so strong about this disrupt team right here, John. They are not afraid to lean on that timer and allow the defense to make those mistakes. We see this time and time again from their offenses. Very patient, leaning on the defense, trying to just stay around them. They're not even exactly trying to, you know, apply so much pressure that they make the mistakes. Sonics put their face inside of that breach and allowed Shuttle to just massacre the entire team. So again, we're back to that patience game here for Disrupt. Let's see how the Sonics act now that they know that Disrupt are going to be sticking to their guns. Over to the basement here now for the Sonics. The castle making another reappearance after baiting the Mira pick there initially. We'll see where exactly those are going to go. We've seen Castle used quite a bit here in the past, actually, so this shouldn't be too surprising what we're going to see from Easley being set up. It is assuming, of course, it goes on to the site, which may not be necessarily true from his uh, current little wanderings across the map here. He'll definitely have one going on to this. That gives a lot of extra security to the roamers in case Disrupt wanted to send anybody through Strip early on. And away from that, we'll try to keep a close eye on Easley there and see where the next two end up going down. Yeah, so game plan for Disrupt walking into this setup is going to be getting the cutoff very early for where the Sonics want to fall back. The problem yeah, is, is like what we talked about in the previous matchup with SSG on Oregon. They're very similar setups. There's a lot of hatches here and a lot of avenues for these roamers to get back to site. So utilizing all of these separate avenues, it's going to be difficult for Disrupt to keep them locked down. So they're more than likely just going to try and handle the garage slash secret area to make sure that Sonics can't fall all the way back. But Sonic's main game plan more than likely going to be that bar area. We'll see how they try to play it out. It could be anything, you know, of the sort. We do see some Sonic's members moving off. So it appears that it's going to be super and easily downstairs trying to hold back Disrupt. Plenty of time for the execute to go off. One of the hard breach charges will need to be used to open up Jacuzzi Balcony, bringing the total down from five to four here. So still a little bit of drone work being done by NJR just to make sure we don't have anybody on the other side of the wall. Pretty sure they got a quick glimpse of Slevin, so they'll be aware of the presence. 
from the defenders on this floor where exactly that presence will be is still yet to be seen but no what? some bad timing from slevin has his back turned in the hallway just as the breach is open that's an easy kill for njr as well as an early start on the man count but it's not going to stay that way gomfy quickly from i believe the main stairs window or possibly against a player in the hallway at top stairs is able to trade that back out and bring us down into a 4v4 that's a really nice refrag there from Gomfi, and it needed to happen. Very problematic area for Slebin to be in. Early game here for Disrupt. Ends up getting NJR, though, and that's going to be very, very impactful. NJR having the most frags right now for the Disrupt squad, so shutting him down. Definitely going to slow down and Disrupt overall. And as we talked about before, they really like playing their offenses patiently. So it's all about time management for them now. They still need to work their way down to site and start getting some vertical control here. For the Sonics, they've already adjusted all the way back downstairs, so it really is in the court of Disrupt. Still over a minute to go, so a lot of possibilities opened up here still for the Disrupt roster to play off of, which exactly they're going to be able to capitalize on that we will find out later on in the round here. J9 is uh, having some trouble, I think, getting out that breach. And in the meantime, there we go. He'll be able to hop it. He'll be regrouping with Shuttle and some of the others here. There's still a lot of soft destruction work that can be done to... Make their overall ease of movement a little bit easier here. J9's actually going to take a look down through the breach. A nice find as well. Realized that Easley was going to be possibly on the other end of that. And is able to line up the headshot. Which beautifully timed right there. The hatch will go along with that as there shouldn't be much in the way of denial now from the defensive side. And that pretty much should be all the access that Disrupt can ask for at this point. Nothing much should be holding them back from their actual execute at this point. No, not at all. And when you have Shuttle as your overwatch, you're in for a pretty damn good time. This guy has been dynamite throughout the entire season, laying ways to entire teams, but it's actually Reed battling his way down the main stairs. He finds a rotate as well, but it's iconic with two quick kills. Nitrocell as well as Weapon. Super on the dummies box. Not ready for the buck to be in his face, though. Stun Grenade goes off. It's all down to Iconic, who picks up Shuttle quickly. Diffuser being stuck by J9, and he has to stick it. Iconic with a quick four. And that's going to be a round for the Sonics to start us off for the defensive half. Quick moves from Iconic. Knew he needed to deny that plan as quickly as possible so as not to open up any play capability in the 1v1 and shuts it down. Reels kind of spur of the moment trade there too. One from a Nitro Cell that I think came from Super and one from a different player. That's the only thing that really keeps the Sonics alive in that round. The execute was going great up until that point, but all of a sudden things are brought back down into a 2v2 and the chances for Sonics to win are reignited, giving Iconic the possibility to close out on that 1v2 clutch and ultimately tie his team back up now at 1-1 one one overall within the map. G DG looking quite strong on these offenses. They did a really good job of eventually working their way towards the site and attempting that execute. But the main problem was is that they weren't centralizing their forces around the armory area. Instead, they tried to go for these extended clears into church. And that was ill-advised, especially because Iconic existed there. And we saw exactly what he got away with. We're talking Nitro Cells and three big kills coming in off of that SMG 11 play. Iconic right now, the only only member of S of, uh, of the Sonics, excuse me, that has more than one kill. So we're taking a look, seeing if there's going to be anything special here with regards to the setup. Sonics will move into for round number three. It's looking pretty much the same as to what we saw before the castle barricades coming in once again here to allow for them to have good play capability from the first floor. Garage reinforcements to really double down on that. And still the double reinforcement barricade on the two garage panels as well. So very much wanting to rely on that capability to use the nitro cell in a late round capacity to deny the plant like Stokes was talking about back in round number one. Okay, well, we'll see if it works out a little bit better for them now. Disrupt, again, that patience paying off in that first round. And expect us to be talking about that a lot today. We really don't ever see Disrupt go for extremely aggressive rounds, especially inside of the early game. So they're going to be sticking to their guns once again, leaning on that Intel game, making sure that they know where these Sonics members are. It is going to be a little bit of a change up here for the Sonics. They will be running wall denial this time. Mute Jammer on as well as Gomfi here for some attempted bandit tricking, but they're going to have to worry about NJR's positioning. He's got concussions. We need to see easily move up here. Otherwise, this is exactly what's going to happen. Gomfi ends up getting concussed, can't get the wall. And because of that, the wall has now been breached. Those concussions 
sounds just too potent. Gomfy has to back off. I'm kind of surprised Gomfy doesn't have taken any damage there as he stays very close to the breach up until the bitter end of it. He's going to lose one of his evil eyes for a moment here as an additional charge works its way in from Reed, but not too much else away from that that he has to worry about in the immediate future anyway. NJR is on the hunt, and this is where the beginning of the end really started for Disrupt's attack last time was he was able to get two beautiful entries Things continue to collapse for the Sonics from that point forward. NJR is going to go for it once again. He's allowed to walk right in. A bit of confusion as they're having trouble isolating out this additional Red Stairs player. Easily might be free to swing in a moment. And indeed, he is a big misread coming in from the Disrupt camp. And now gives back top red control over to the side of the Sonics. Very aggressive play there from NJR. And like we talked about before, we usually don't see that. Big misread there as his entire team was still waiting on execute. So assuming they were talking about what they wanted to do there and he assumed that they were going for it instead. Iconic going back to the position that we saw him so strongly play before, but the Sonics looking a lot stronger inside of this CCTV defense this time around. Super still having some very strong play downstairs, but has to worry about the buck as Shuttle has now worked his way inside of the uh, stock area. Can possibly use that skeleton key to pop this door and get into a gunfight with Super, and it could go very well for him. Obviously, this ump is not the best weapon in the world, but Shuttle going to go about things in a different fashion. He'd much, worry, uh, much rather worry about the breach, and you can't exactly blame him. His team needs to go for this execute right now. J9 gets the pickup onto Iconic, and that's going to be the call sign for all of them to go in for this execute, but Slebin's there to shut down the initial one. Super takes down Shuttle as well. Plant going down, but immediately canceled. Nitro Cell shot out of the air. He Easily taken down on top of red as well. Slebin with the immediate refrag is down to the double, but it's Slebin all over the board. Triple kill for him as the Sonics pick up CCTV. So, so unfortunate for Disrupt as they had a successful execute built up off of the initial pick. It wasn't even from NJR, it was from one of his teammates. And that was the problem. That was the core of the confusion right there. His teammate finds that kill more than likely gives the call that it's all clear on red stairs. So NJR doesn't do his due diligence to check the rest of that area and realize that Easley still has presence right around the corner. He's allowed to pop back up, swing around the corner. His opponent's not even aware of the fact that he's there, so it's a free kill for him. And as soon as he goes down, all of the control that NGR had just stolen back in the site and at top red is now gone, and that kills a lot of the confidence in the rest of the team trying to work their way in from construction, too. It makes the rest of that take a really, really tough ask. Yeah, you, you could see it. I mean, even in, if you can call it body language, right? But you could even see it inside of how NJR was playing that position that he knew he was not supposed to be there at that time. Uh, and it's not like he could exactly leave either because the Sonics still have a garage member as well as easily that can rotate up red stairs. They still had complete control of lounge, which is going to give them access to not only super, but easily to contest that area. Very ill-advised move by NJR there. And you could definitely tell that that's one that he's not going to allow to happen again. All right, well, over to the tertiary site now for the Sonics. Things have been going well. They switched over to the basement defense a couple rounds back. Some success on their cash reattempt, and now we head over to Jim. Their final site before basement is unlocked for play on round number five here. Definitely one of the, the more difficult sites to defend, a lot more to manage, a lot more to juggle as a defender on this site when compared to some of the other ones, but Sonics have a plan, and part of that plan is going to involve Mira, which this Mira play will be actually be quite interesting considering it's right above the Logi hatch. It means it's very easily counterable by the attackers, but at the same time, if they don't notice it and don't try to counter it immediately because of this hatch getting open, someone could have a dirty counter to that angle that Retro just opened up there on the hard breach as well, so... A lot of uh, potential play angles getting opened up here, and really it's going to be based on the first couple kills that will decide who comes out on top of these. Yeah, exactly. It's all going to be about the crossfires here. Reed might have a cheeky kill as he knows Iconics behind this shield, but it's actually Castle Barricaded instead. So they're going to have to go about things in a different fashion. Breaching Charge out here for Reed, so he'll get rid of one of these initially, but doesn't seem like he got it placed on there unless he did and he's gonna pop that one and then so on and so forth love to see yeah he did end up getting it on there animation was just a little bit too quick for me but able to get that rid of that master at castle nevertheless still have some pressure here onto logistics and this should be the area that they need to worry about the most both of these mirror windows are going to be a big sign that the sonics want to hold down from this area disrupt doing more of the same though very patient using this utility in the info game to clear out a lot of these areas they've already made the sonics back off of construction simply by blowing the single panel and that's going to work really well into the hand of disrupt 
first half of the round now gone here and relative lack of action that's happened so far up until this point disrupt do need to start gaining control back relatively soon otherwise they're going to find themselves in a similar position to what we saw out of what against ssg in that previous matchup there where they were just working against a massive turtle setup and weren't really able to do much to execute against it since the utility from the defenders as well as just their on-site gadget play hadn't really been tested up until that point now that aspect of it more likely not going to be a massive issue for disrupt here we are seeing a lot of attempts to breach in the problem is like i was talking about before the defender utility barely having been tested a nice nitro cell toss is going to bring j9 low and it'll be finished off by iconic a couple moments later super will get spotted out here still in the back of logistics by a drone but iconic in the meantime is still firing off on all cylinders from the inside of jim he gets his third now through the wall as he takes down reed njr will finally trade out for one but it's very short-lived here shuttle tries to roll up the main stairs and is also swiftly shut down by gumpy as the sonics claim yet another round and complete a full site rotation without losing a single round and that is exactly why you back off and play that utility the sonics having that respect for disrupt early on allowed them <clears throat> excuse me to lean on that timer and then utilize that utility to slow down disrupts overall execute as well as get some really really nice picks early on but the highlight of that overall you gotta give it up to iconic some amazing shots with that tcsg 12 just because it got nerfed doesn't mean that that weapon isn't strong it recently got a little bit of a buff as well so it's nice to see that come back into the fold and work extremely extremely well for one of these defenders all right, guys, well, just a couple seconds away from us heading into the next round. Some great success from the Sonics there as they try so hard to battle for control of the gym area as well as the main entry into bedroom, but are shut down every step of the way by a great hold from Iconic on that TCSG. Like Stokes is saying, it's been a while since we've had a highlight clip from that gun. Especially if you look back towards the maze where that thing was being used like crazy, especially by the second place team at that very event. But... Always nice to get another clip of it, as we just saw right there. Into the basement, the Sonics will now return to here for round number five. A lot of emphasis going on to those vents, as you might expect here. We do have the castle in play once again. This time on Super, though, we're going to see very similar reinforcements to what we had on the previous round. That's going to be the real comeback story if we ever see that happen. The uh, Ninjas in Pajama special. Double TCSG long-range gunfight taking. Uh, we, we haven't seen that in quite some time, as you said, all the way since February. So I, I know, obviously, it's, you know, COVID-19 season, and this year seems to not only drag on but be the fastest year of my life, but February was quite some time ago. So, again, nice to see this gun back in play. Iconic bringing it again here inside of round five, as we'll still have some Goyo shields in play. It seems as though the Sonics really like leaning on these castle barricades with Sledge being gone. Again, we talked about that inside of that first round, how important those were for that luggage, or excuse me, for that lounge setup. Uh, but now it's it's growing, you know, even larger in the amount of areas that you can apply these castle barricades, and they'll be extremely tough to get rid of because you have to dedicate those other soft destructors, uh, or excuse me, soft destructors, in order to do so. All right, so a minute into the round here, like we talked about many, many times before, not going to expect to see anything too crazy here within the first minute, especially with this heavy of a site focus setup from the Sonics here. They even moved their castle barricades back just to correct something I said earlier. It's not similar to what we had in the previous round. That allowed for greater roamer freedom back in round, uh, that would have been two or three at this point. This time they set it up all on the site with a much better focus on defending the actual site players here. DG with a nice find. It's not going to come from the top down angle you just saw. It's going to come from NJR. Once again, poking his nose in the enemy's business here as he sneaks into blue very early on and gets the opening pick against Slevin, hiding behind more than likely that AC generator inside of blue. Well, there's a lot going on over on the armory side, so NJR just capitalizes off of negligence from the Sonics, not really adhering to what could possibly go on inside of Blue. Quickly just sprints down Secret Staircase, fries the man sitting behind the AC unit, and walks away. There was nothing more to it than that. So DG now with some really strong control, and Slevin off the board, who's made quite some impact throughout the two series that they've had so far today. But... With Iconic still alive, there's definitely still a whole hell of a lot of chance that the Sonics are able to pull this one out of their hat. Disrupt now focusing on this execute. They're working their way down secret stairs once again. NJR back in the same position. Reed going to drop inside of Moto. This is telling of that execute coming quite soon. Getting rid of some barbed wire as well, but it's going to be the patience game once again for Disrupt. 
a super not wanting to re-peak NJR's angle. Already took an L on the first duel there. Wants to try and bring it to a much closer fight where hopefully he has a better chance to get a headshot here on the re-peak from NJR. Keep in mind, not a single player on Disrupt has taken a sliver of damage at this point. But at the same time, they've yet to move into the basement, mainly utilizing all of these top-down angles they had set up for themselves previously. That's going to change now at the 22nd mark. In moves NJR, finishes off his kill from earlier. Knows he's got another one right around the corner. His teammate's going to be able to trade it out for him instead. Gompi did get one trade back, but it seems like it's not going to matter too much here as he's now the last man standing. And he'll also get taken out by Jane I know as Disrupt claim round number five, finally getting themselves a second. Not only a second, but their first plant of the series as well. Strong stuff here from Disrupt and great beginnings. Uh, again, we've talked about this throughout this entire series, and I know we're going to harp on it throughout this entire thing, but the patience from Disrupt is really the way that they're able to win these rounds because they throw off the Sonics with these early engagements. It's making it to where NJR is an extremely potent player because he's really the only one that's being proactive on this entire lineup. Whenever they get some intel, NJR is the first point of contact. Contact, and he has been absolutely electric so far throughout these rounds. So as long as NJR is able to stay ahead of the curve, Disrupt are looking very, very strong here so far. Into round six, the final round here for Sonic's defense. And they'll get to make one final attempt, their third attempt overall so far with a one-to-one -one record of defending up here on the inside of Cash. Much like the previous two rounds, the castle is going to be incredibly important to their overall play here as they are going to triple down, I guess would be at this point, on the play from Super hiding out inside of Lobby to make sure he can possibly contribute with a Nitro Cell in the late round, kind of gambling on the fact that nobody from Disrupt will want to use Utility to clear him. So far, they've been right on that in the previous two rounds, so why not try it a third time? I mean, the main thing is, is they really can't dedicate the utility down there like they want to. I mean, uh, if I can quickly grab all of your guys' attention, let's look at this offensive lineup. We have no frag grenades here. The real person that's going to change up a lot of this round is going to be Reed with these uh, EMPs, strictly because they're going to be able to get off a lot of this, uh, you know, soft destruction without having to utilize those flash grenades. That's why we see Shuttle with these breaching charges here instead, because Retro and J9 have them covered in the stuns department. So now all they have to worry about really is these castle barricades that super is providing for the defense really nice setup here from dg and really thinking things through when it comes to applying their secondary utility so quick attempt gonna be made right here richard just dancing a little bit i think before they open up the wall get down tonight <laughs> yeah, let's do a little move with the breaching charge in hand but either way just trying to make sure that they are clear to try and open this back up flashes goes in to doubly make sure of that also going to see an X Kairos used to open up the castle barricade, blocking out the electrical window, or excuse me, the CCTV oh. window. And they're just going to go for it. Retro walking right in. Quickly going to get denied here, though, by Iconic. And we're even going to have a team kill Nitro oh. Cell happen amidst that. That actually reopened possibilities for Disrupt to win this. Super now rotating up through red, and he's going to get taken down by Shuttle. And that is not the result I expected out of that gunfight, given the way it started. But Disrupt indeed win it out and take the final round of the first half with them. Disrupt has finally done it, John. They know how to set pace and really get in people's faces. That's what I like to see when it comes down to clutch time. This is qualifier. Pull everything out of the playbook and try some stuff. Disrupt looking so damn good. And that last round there, very, very dominant gameplay, especially coming in from Shuttle. This is somebody that we've been highlighting throughout all of Stage 2. Such a dominant player. But it's been NJR that's been the highlight of DG so far far throughout this uh, at least map but now it's shuttle back on top getting these frags like we expect and dg showing a hand that we didn't even know that they had access to beautiful stuff from disrupt like i said a bit of a rocky start to that execute for the most part just getting absolutely shut down by, i believe it was iconic playing the maestro from a little bit closer to the back site however right after that team kill nitro cells when things start to flip and indeed shuttle gets in the face of every single remaining member on the sonics and really turns that round back on its heels allowing for disrupt to come out on top and more importantly for them to now tie it up at 3-3 that's a very respectable scoreline coming off the attacking side of clubhouse now just need to translate it and get themselves one full rotation here on their defensive side and one round on top of that and they'll have control over this opening map
you you even have to give them you know more than that i mean they they got three three on a map where sledge is banned and all the defense did was utilize castle that is a large large task to try and tackle as an offense and they did so well adapting and rising to the occasion when needed most this is definitely a win for the disrupt camp when it comes to this series so far let's see if disrupt can translate that like you said into some wins on the defense already starting things off off strong getting rid of two drones early on here already making some impact on that drone economy let's take a look a little over 30 seconds into the round here much like what we saw from the sonics this is a very heavy site focus setup from disrupt so more than likely we're not going to see a whole lot of action in this round until we get later on here the only player off site is really going to be retro and even off site is stretching it with regards to that definition a little bit of work being done here since we do have the Kaid on that hatch to try and counter out the opening, but it will not work out. Just need to commit a little bit, a few Thatcher EMP charges in order to get past that, and they'll be successful in opening that up. The first hatch down, two more potentially to go. That is assuming they didn't sneak one off on me here without me noticing. Well, it seems as though Slubbin has used his last EU1D, so they're not going to be able to stop anything anytime soon. NGR lining up his nitro cell as well, but spinning around to see if he can possibly hear anything off of those audio cues. The Sonics, very patient early on here, but they've already got quite a bit of destruction done inside of Kitchen. They're just mainly focused on this Kitchen hatch for the time being. Gompy going to get rid of the default camera downstairs as the Sonics continue working at these tasks. The main problem right now, though, is they don't have access to Sledge, and they didn't end up bringing Buck, which is going to lead to this. J9 and Shuttle shut down, but Iconic! What was that? Can he get four? He downs him! But no, he got the pistol out instead. Iconic with a quad kill. He just waltzes into blue. He owns this place. It isn't Clubhouse. It's Iconic's kingdom. Who needs to set up, man? Just, set, just send Iconic just in there. send him! He's in 18 in there. kills right now, dude. He knows dude. how to play this 18. game. He knows, he knows how to click heads. Ooh, 16. I, I take it back. I'm sorry. I suck at my job. 16 kills. 16, <laughs> 0, and 4. He's at a 4.0 KD right now. Oh the my man God. is on another level. You heard the talk about him not stepping up as much during the first map of that last series, and he heard it because he wanted to come into this series with a bang, and he has done that to a number some beautiful work being done there by iconic single-handedly just dms his way to victory there in the site and gets sonics into the lead now at four to three beautiful stuff just some explosive rounds by both of these teams and one of the best rounds we've seen from an individual on the sonics today i mean that was a really really strong showing there it, it really caught me off guard as well because disrupt got two really nice kills inside of the kitchen area i assume that the sonics were practically done at that point but iconic hitting the nail on the head right at the proper time. I don't think that there was any better moment for him to try and push through blue than that. Able to pick up four kills, decimating the defense of Disrupt. They're going to head back downstairs immediately. And honestly, you can't blame them. Really, the only thing that went wrong was they lacked blue control and Iconic was able to capitalize off of it. Yeah, so they'll call that one a fluke and hope that they can obviously shore up the defenses in that department a little bit more reasonably on the re-attempt. I would say they've got a pretty good chance to do that. That's a bit of a one in a million play right there from Iconic, but who knows? Maybe we might be surprised if they're able to get away with that once again. We've already seen something similar from NJR back in the previous half as well. So this is making for quite the exciting game, but at the same time, stuff like that should definitely be watched by the Disrupt camp. And that's going to be brutal just from a moral standpoint for Disrupt right there. Having to deal with a player just walking in and killing four of you that can't help from the kind of ego perspective of this matchup. So Disrupt might be playing a little bit more conservatively now, trying to watch their backs, making sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah, the only ego that it's helping is Iconics, and I don't think that you want to try and have any effect on that at all right now, because if you give that man, you know, any more air, I think his head's going to burst. That guy is playing lights out right now. They're going to be able to get uh, control of the Moto area. NJR backs off, applies his last Electro Claw where needed. Now we're going to have Triple for Church locked down, so it's back on to Disrupt to try and get these early kills. They did it the last time, but obviously we saw how that one worked out. As of right now, they're able to de deny a lot of... Ow. Well, actually, all of them, I think. Yeah, that's going to be every single one of the Xkairos from Easily now gone. Super's already used both of his. 
they no longer have hard destruction. They're going to have to try and funnel into sight, and this time they don't have the element of surprise. Now, they did use a nitro cell to be able to deny that, so just an important note for later, if they're at a lack of that utility when the execute moves in, they may end up regretting that choice. But for the time being, it'll work out well because NJR still has one to use later on here on top of the fact that they've outright denied any top-down presence from the hatches that will, you know, obviously be an issue in the late round. That's not going to be a problem anymore here. So the Sonic's constantly moving around the map at this moment, trying to shuffle and look for any other opportunities that could present themselves, but they've only got Moto. They probably have access to Blue Hatch too, because sometimes it doesn't get reinforced, but usually you're not going to end up using that. And we can see Disrupt already getting in the way of all the horizontal angles. There's that second Nitro Cell. It's already taken down Slevin. It's just a sea of blue on the kill feed right now as Disrupt makes easy work of shutting down that traditional push from the Sonic's roster. It will even come close. It's not a single player from the Disrupt roster gets eliminated in that attempt. Yeah, definitely a sigh of relief from Disrupt after that last round, able to make quick work of the Sonics as they go for the execute, but every single gunfight falling into the favor of the blue. Disrupt now head up to CCTV after making sure to check the box downstairs. We're not going to see anything too unorthodox like we saw on the Sonic side of things. So Disrupt going to be going about things in, uh, you know, very similar fashion as to what we are used to seeing. We're going to have one of the most important six picks I've ever seen in my <laughs> career. Ash coming in for Ash. That's what we call a pro gamer move. Now watch this drive. Yeah, that's, that's like only the fourth <laughs> time that's been done today. So. Someone's oh, having good. fun with their six picks. I mean, you might as well have fun with it if you're not going to use it. You it's know true, I mean? you know. Might as well. It's there, right? Just click on it. Click the shiny thing, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, as as in recent history, I don't know if anybody else has been dealing with this, but uh, whenever we end up scrimming right now, the six pick timer stays for so long. And obviously the pick phase is like 15 seconds for that. But I, I will be like holding the button and, and it'll just stick. It'll just like boo, like right at the end. And then you won't get your six pick in. I'm like, oh no, man, I, need, I needed the six the pick. I messed pick up. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my safety blanket because I'm typing too much in all chat. All right, well, we've got Sonics out onto the board yet again. This time it's going to be against a cash defense from Disrupt here. Nothing crazy in the Disrupt camp as far as I can see with what they're bringing to the table on their setup here. Some pretty usual stuff is we've got the extended reinforced shield there to allow for play against the Breach. Since they are more than likely expecting the Breach to get open pretty early, Shuttle can try to trick this. It's just a lot more difficult now because of the way they work. So Shuttle actually going to get spotted here for a moment super trying to figure out if there is indeed an active denial player on it or not i don't know if he got the drone deep enough to see the bandit but shuttle's certainly watching out for it and in a moment here we're probably going to see the first attempt to open it up shuttle currently not ready for it so if they do it here quickly enough shuttle's probably not going to have a and even an attempt to trick it Oh, might have an early kill here. J9 gets droned out. He has one on secret that was utilizing the off angle. Gonfi lane on the staircase to get below the door frame there. Very intelligent play from him playing those off angles. Those are usually the ones that get you those initial kills that we see happen all the time. So J9 going to rotate back into garage. He needs to play this position and play it well. As long as they're able to hold on to garage, it's going to be difficult for SSG, or excuse me, the Sonics to plant inside of CCTV. Some soft destruction now to get rid of the bandit, but doesn't seem like they're too ready to actually watch him. Oh. He's going to actually not get rid of the initial one. Shuttle's been down and dusted. Slubbin takes him down down after the breach goes off they try for the refrag but he's already evaded the timing on that one was so close i don't even blame shuttle for it to be honest with you because for my pov it looked like he had it however that had to be just a split second off from actually going down there so very unfortunate for shuttle will get blown up by the breach and finished off a few moments later early advantage goes to the sonics as a result of that now, how do they capitalize on this? That's the question. You still have red stairs control, lower lobby control. All that still belongs to Disrupt right now. Reed's oh. going to be able to show us why those other parts of the map are so important to control. Meanwhile, over here on the catwalk in garage, he sneaks off the trade against Slevin, taking him out of the fight. And he may have an opportunity for more if players start to push him in garage as well. But for now, he's got relative safety on the inside of the catwalk and it does not look like anybody from the sonics is going to be trying to force him out anytime soon most of the pressure in fact looks like it's working its way in from the construction side 
And it starts out successfully too here for Iconic, but there is an elephant in the room here that we're looking at right now. It's NJR, however, they seem to be aware of it. He goes one for one before getting traded out by Gomfi, who will now recommit himself with the rest of his team to that construction push. Retro, is he ready for the swing at top red? He is, and it's got that 81 bullet, so you betcha he can transition it into a second kill. Super shows up on the barricades to trade things out once again as he takes down Reed, but in a 1v1, he's got limited time to make this play work. Tries to deal with the Banshee, loses some of his HP in the process, but his opponent does not want to take the fight at top red backs away from the diffuser he's now got a safe plant retro is going to have to move back up now knowing that he failed to deny the actual plant on the timer he's got to take him down post timer should be able to do it though but no can't oh. find him initially super's actually able to get away and behind the relative safety of the cash table he's trying to wrap around it now going for the rotate pick but no retro finds the lineup first and shuts it down for disrupt they'll go up to five what a round from Disrupt, and most notably Retro. That's how you hold down a site with an Alda. I have never in my life seen someone with low ammo on that gun. That just tells you how much work Retro put in on that round. So many strong things going on there for Disrupt. The Sonics seem to have had it, especially after that botched 1v1 there from Retro, but... The king wears his crown still, clutches up on sight, and makes sure to put Disrupt back in the lead. So Disrupt with a tentative lead for now. Move over into gym bedroom to try out their next defense here. Only two more rounds away from shutting down the initial map and taking their own pick with it. The Sonics, of course, they're not too far behind, so they're going to look for some easy revenge and see if they can keep this tied up. If they can keep this matchup neck and neck, and possibly take this thing to overtime. Maybe a victory for the Sonics as well if they can flip it completely. Uh, operator lineup not looking too crazy here for our defenders, so we should expect a pretty normal hold when it comes to the site. Yeah, absolutely. I think overall so far for the Sonics on their offense, it doesn't seem as though they really game plan to not have Sledge. We've been seeing a lot of problems happen where Sledge could possibly be utilized, whether it be frag grenades or his soft destruction to assist Sonics in handling some of the problems that they're running into. So, I mean... Overall, their defensive setup was really, really strong, but I think Disrupt did a lot, uh, a lot, were a lot better against it than the Sonics thought that they were going to be. They assumed that they would get more rounds with that, but since it's split 3-3, I really do think that this is in Disrupt's favor. I think that they are the ones to try and, you know, it's their map to lose right now. So with Disrupt in the driver's seat here, the Sonics trying to figure out their way around the sledge ban made for a very very interesting matchup to be sure some pressure from the sonics initially going up onto the roof here probably just players yep take care of that hatch real quick easily we'll get the job done without too much delay other players are already standing by to commit themselves to the inside of the building first place they're gonna have to work their way into more than likely is gonna be cash as easily is dropping down on that now it's been left soft so we are gonna see breaching charges used to get to the inside if they want to try and knock njr out that's gonna be a little bit more effort and you might think that they could just easily try and put a uh put a hard breach on this wall and force him out but you'll also notice that soft destruction on the floor. There we go, right on cue. He can do this and pretty much counter out most of the hard breach. He'll miss that second one though, meaning that he's no longer safe on the inside. Makes the executive decision to get the heck out of here and roams back to the site. Not a lot of time wasted, so some nice quick work of dealing with him there by the Sonics. That's some fantastic stuff, especially how they applied the Xkairos from easily, making sure to set those at the bottom of the wall so the impacts can't have any effect over them. Some really, really strong stuff, and now the Sonics have control of cash. Still plenty of stuff for them to worry about, though. Logistics to check off the board, as well as Jacuzzi, if they want to go for it, but want we'll to see how that one works out. Still plenty of time for them to adopt anything into how they want to handle this offense. Disrupt has mostly backed up, and JR and J9 currently centered around logistics, as they're just now starting to get pressure and some soft destruction goes off inside of red sonics with full control of construction but they want to make sure that they do not miss a single bit of info on this site before they move forward a lot of focus from the disrupt camp right now and making sure that this hatch drop is denied but ultimately the sonics want to force their way through to the inside of logic gomfi's gonna take the first step and the first kill along with it as he knocks out njr easily he's gonna find success taking down not just j9 but retro as well shuttle is trying to stem the tide back in Logi, but he's taken some massive damage and has gone down to under 25. Gomfi finds yet another kill now against Reed, and Shuttle is also going to fall as he's not even ready for the final swing from Iconic to the outside of Logi. Beautiful work from the Sonics, making very, very fast 
the work of dispatching the hold on the inside of gym and bedroom. Well, it wouldn't be a qualifier if it wasn't a teeter-totter back and forth between two teams, especially on Clubhouse. 5-5 five, five right now between these two squads as they continue to battle back and forth. Right now, still seeming as though Disrupt has the advantage. The tertiary site not working out really well for them, though. They gave up control of cash really early on, which, you know, the Sonics were able to snowball into a lot of logistics control. I don't think what, uh, what really caught them off guard was the amount of... Sonic's members that committed themselves to the logistics area. I mean, we saw pressure not only from construction, but also from the hatch all at the same damn time. And that was the big problem. There's so many angles to worry about there. And we saw the amount of prone angles that Disrupt were worrying about. They're really trying to catch these members off guard moving in from construction, but it was the hatch play that really slowed down a lot of that progress for Disrupt over there and gave Sonic's surround. Uh, I mean, the Sonic's looking quite strong inside of that. Granted, obviously, it was flawless, but they handled a lot of what was going on to the eastern side of the map with flying colors. So some great stuff showing up. A very decisive more than anything attack from the Sonics right there. Never faltering from their overall strategy. Never second guessing themselves on their swings, which is a big part of that. That lack of confidence kind of costing you, even if you just over peak by an inch or two there. We never really saw it from the Sonics. They knew exactly what they were doing at all times, and it showed as they were able to execute really some beautiful stuff to take down disrupt without much of a response coming in from anybody on that defender side now big issue here for the sonics they do have to go up against the basement attack once again which has been pretty well held by disrupt minus that one attack from pretty much just iconic that snuck through blue a couple rounds back the repeat looked pretty good for them and now it's time to see if they can do it once more to take the lead away from the sonics one more time as they inch up to match point well, this one is going to be a touch different from when, when uh, excuse me, when we saw Iconic fight his way in through blue. Disrupt now on the Rome game, but they're going to have some good read on this here from the Sonics camp. Early drones upstairs are going to be telling of where Shuttle is, and most notably NJR. They're going to back up towards red, but now the main problem is they don't have any assistance in this side of this mid floor. So if easily and the rest of the Sonics are able to get control of lounge, all of a sudden disrupt cannot rotate back to site. This could be very, very problematic. Once again, they still could have some access to the bar area, but as long as this is a five V five, I don't see this going very well. Now in the last two minutes of the round here, disrupt still with quite a few players on that extended room as we were just looking at here, but the Sonics, Seem to be very well aware of it as they have players still stacked upstairs to deal with it. Try and flush those players out eventually. It's going to be some time before they reach it, though. At the moment, both teams are really on opposite sides of the map from each other. And it does look like the Sonics might be kind of ignoring the overall hold on the upstairs positions there from Disrupt, which could prove dangerous. However, with the fact the Sonics are more than likely aware of this, I'm not sure if it's going to have the effectiveness the Disrupt are hoping for right now. The hatch being open. Don't believe there's going to be a counter to this from anybody on Disrupts. They'll have kitchen access. They see the Banshee right at the bottom, so it'll be very unwise to try and push that at this point in time. Disrupt are trying to check a few other avenues here, too. J90, for instance, going way out in the dirt to see if there's been any progress made by the Sonics here. They won't find anything. The good news here, in the meanwhile, for the Disrupt camp is they have realized that, that extended roam to the inside of security and cash was really just not doing much for them. So they've peeled it back, and they only have their vigil out on the site now. A really smart adjustment here, but the Sonics running out of destruction when they needed it most. A Banshee still remains at the bottom of that hatch, so they're going to have to try and fight their way in. Retro with a lot of damage onto him, but easily ends up getting taken down by J9 inside of Dirt. They're pressuring the single panel now, but it's going to be Shuttle all over the board. They battle back, but it's Disrupt on the defensive side to win out the round and be the first ones to achieve map points. These gunfights start, they do not end as the folks from the Sonics try to go for a very quick and decisive execute only to be quickly and decisively shut down by the Disrupt roster, which similarly to plenty of rounds that we've seen played out today, hadn't really been touched up until that point. Their roam game had already been peeled back to the inside of the site with maybe one or two exceptions to that. And that led itself to be enough to fend off against that drop from Kitchen, which as Stokes mentioned, was affected pretty heavily by the fact that there was still a Banshee at the bottom of it. That more than likely is what killed the planter, gave off a sound cue, of course, and then gave away the fact that they were trying to move in rest of the team failed to find success anywhere else in the execute, and that led to a pretty decisive shutdown yet again from the Disrupt side. So they take the lead, they push it up to six first, take one more here on the cash defense, and they'll have the map. But if not, we're going to OT. 
the sludge band giveth and the sludge band taketh away <laughs> as that round ended up going into the favor of disrupt so now the sonics some major problems they need to win this round to push it to ot disrupt has looked pretty solid so far on cctv uh the main thing was is that they had a really really strong retake the sonics ended up getting that plant down that was around where we saw the plant on top of green box by our main man super but ended up losing the 1v1 against retro so we'll see if we get down to clutch time for either one of these squads once again or someone's going to snowball uh, as of right now, though, Disrupt quite strong at holding down their sights. Really, the only one that they've been having a very, very big problem with is got to be that basement. Granted, that last round, quite strong. So let's take a look and see if Disrupt can be as strong on the second floor hold as they were on their basement hold. Interesting wrinkle there with NJR's position, but we'll come back to that later if it becomes relevant, because right now... Sonics will be able to dodge that for the most part. Easily might be the biggest glaring exception if he decides to clear through bar, but at this point, that's not in the cards. However, these drones are, and they're going to become a big problem for NJR because they have spotted him out completely. He now needs to change position, and there probably isn't an immediate fallback in his mind, so it's going to take him a while before he's in safe quarters again and ready to fight against the push from the Sonics. In the meanwhile, Sonics have been working on opening up the breach of the balcony, and they'll get it off without too much worry. Shuttle interestingly enough is going to electrocute his extended shield which could work out pretty well here to provide some extra security against pushes from the sonics yeah it's actually gonna work out really well we have njr all the way across the map he's going to be all the way over inside a strip this is actually going to provide disrupt quite a few advantages we haven't seen a run out just yet from any member inside of this matchup so this is going to be a first time here runs out able to get one and it's easily of all people off the board easily having such a big impact for the sonics overall today and to remove him from play is a very very big deal for disrupt especially inside of the early game this is going to take away someone to hold one of these crosses that they desperately need a good gun on the loss of a hard breach not going to be the end of the world, of course, considering they already have their main avenue of attack open. I don't think that construction or anything else has been dealt with, though, which will absolutely prove itself to be problematic trying to work in from separate areas of the map. They use their final hard breach now that easily has been eliminated on garage access. That's going to start to really put some pressure onto Reed here, but he's ready for it. He knows that the garage door is going to get opened up. He knows that more than likely someone snuck in. No, he doesn't know someone snuck in from the stairs. In fact, beautiful play from Gomfi right there. It's reignited round play for the Sonics. Now all of a sudden, NJR is panicking as he has to rotate back so, so quickly to the site since the round is still very much on here with them getting catwalk access. It's all about how they handle the garage. Can Sonics try and stop the bleeding, get this plant down, and force this into a post-plant situation? Super goes in for the plant now. What do we have for denial? We have a ton of impacts and a nitro cell, but I think the nitro cell use. might be too little too late. Can he get there in time? He can't stop it, but Super's down. People have been traded. It's a 3v3 going into the post-plant. Bumpy also retaking that downstairs control. NJR trying to fight against the player on Repel, but it's just not working out. Two more kills for the Sonics. Leaves only Retro in this engagement. 18 rounds left in the Alda. He's going to swing out here, try to take the fight against the player on Repel. He can see the hook. He knows where he is. First kill's gone. So is half the ammo remaining in the gun here. He's going to try to hop on it. Comfy should have the easy closeout right below him. He finds him. He takes him down. And that's going to be a round for the Sonics as we enter OT in map number one. Well, they were able to do what they weren't the last time on CCTV. They got the plant down, but not able to win the round. This time, it's all good for the Sonics. Able to get the plant down, get the round win, and push us to overtime. We are going to have a rehost here, folks. So, you guys will be coming back to our beautiful, beautiful faces. So far, we have had a hell of a matchup in between these two, and there's a lot of stuff to break down. I really want to talk about this sludge band right now, John. It seems to have had the most impact inside of a band phase that I've seen in quite some time when it comes to new stuff. Well, it's just because it's such a massive departure from what's been the meta, of course, over the past few months. There was just a discussion from a couple players about this on Twitter yesterday about how we have a couple people that are almost near like 100% pick rate on sledge right now. In fact, there's one person, I think it's either in the Canadian division or like Canadian CL. It's courts. CL, what's up? Courts, right? Or, it's not courts. It's, I think it's either courts or Zilchi from Mirage. It's someone on Mirage, right? Because I think we were yeah. just talking about this yesterday where like someone mm -hmm. has 100% pick rate or very close to it on sledge. And that's become the reality now 
for players who have to fill in that role is that Buck is just really not an option because his job can be done in a lot of situations a bit more adequately by the sledge. And he has frag grenades, which in this game, for those who don't play Siege a lot, frag grenades, if you place them correctly, are an instant kill, possibly more than that. They're an incredibly powerful piece of utility. So having them is pretty much, you know, almost a, a need for a lot of teams on a round-to-round -round basis. And the obvious solution to that for most teams is going to be to bring Sledge since he kind of packs two holes or he does two punches. I don't know. This, yeah, he takes care of multiple things at once. I can't come up with a metaphor for it right now. <laughs> he, he's got a lot of things going yeah. on is I think what you're trying to say. And, and like, I completely agree with you. I mean, if you guys didn't know, you can swing that hammer and destroy something 25 times. 25! I'm so serious. If we have Sledge inside of our next map and you see somebody pick him up, look over at his utility. So you have 25 swings with a hammer as well as two frag grenades that can be used on bubbles or whatever else you need to get rid of on site. He's an extremely potent operator. So to not have him inside of the lineup is going to be extremely difficult to work around, especially since a lot of people don't necessarily game plan to not have access to Sledge. And just to tell you real quick, it was indeed Quartz that has that 100% play on Sledge. Never second guess yourself, kids. We had it right the first time. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like banning smoke to a certain extent, right? It's like one of those mm -hmm. things where it's going to hurt you just as much as it hurts your teammates because it's such a quintessential part of the game at this point. Uh, so it's kind of a dangerous ban, and we're seeing why right now because of the issues that are popping up for both teams on attack. <laughs> Possibly more notably for the folks over on the Sonics, because they seem to be avoiding the Buck pick pretty heavily right now, whereas DG just embraced it and started to bring Buck to pretty much every round. They easily slotted in, made up for the utility part of their, you know, lacking utility from not having access to the Sledge, but they're still missing the grenades. That was the sacrifice that they chose to make by opting in the Buck picks for the Sledge ban. I was very surprised that we didn't see any other operators really come in with frag grenades either. That seemed like a problem that a lot of them ran into on their offenses was that there was only one piece of utility stuck around from the defense, but it would give them enough of a problem where they weren't able to execute correctly. Most notably, we saw Iconic looking down at that Banshee at the bottom of uh, the kitchen hatch inside of Armory. Uh, and eventually when they went for that execute, ended up giving away the sound cue as well slowing down easily which was easily cleaned up by j9 inside of dirt so when it comes to lacking utility especially explosives on site it's going to be difficult to try and battle through things like those banshees simply because there's just so many of them you pair those with ads's and some deployable shields and now you've got a really big problem very surprised we haven't once again seen any frag grenades come in so i like i really really expected us to maybe see some ayana gameplay or you know something along those lines yeah i think the problem is is uh, if i remember correctly maverick's been out here as well right uh correct amundo yeah. we have sledge mav valkyrie and will my so that's like that's what most people i think would go to as the second operator mm -hmm. you'd want to bring that has access to the frag grenades so with him being out of the pool as well it's just it's it's a lot of it's now a lot of thinking that teams have to do to try to incorporate a different operator into the strat it's like, like you said yana would be the most obvious one since her utility can be pretty universally used but i just don't think it slots in as well to attacking mm -hmm. team strategies specifically for Clubhouse more than anything else because they need the utility in other departments. So it's a bit of a complex issue that Sonics have created, not only for their opponents, but for themselves as well. And of course, we're going to get to see it all come to a boil as we are going live once again with the resumation of the match right into overtime here now. Teams are tied currently at 6-6. Six to six. The first team to 8 is going to walk away with this map. And that's the beauty of this, John. We're not even done just yet. This is only the first map in between these two. And I mean, if the first series that the Sonics played was telling of how talented these guys are, this series right here will separate them from that bottom four and try and have them punch up into the top four that specifically super talks about so much he thinks that this team has the talent and that they can push themselves forward this is the time to prove it on a grand stage in front of god and everybody disrupt already applying a six pick here we're getting rid of the jaeger and we're bringing castle along for the trip so nice to have castle here we've talked about him a lot especially being paired with that sledge band Let's see how Disrupt do with it. Immediately, he's going to block off Moto access, and more than likely, he'll either put the two up on top or continue to block off access from the main stair site, as we saw the Sonics doing. So, yeah. He's going to go for the up top block here, which gives his team a lot more roaming capability. You don't have to worry about any surprises coming from strip side of the map. Uh, he does not do the other one, which blocks off lobby access, though. It looks like he's going to put that one somewhere else, and that looks like it's possibly going to be to support the 
extended hold up here that we also saw from disrupt earlier on too so that's an interesting spot to put their third one yeah, definitely agree with you. Uh, what, what was the real quick? What was the last one again? Was it upstairs floor. on construction? For second yeah, floor. It's on Oh, second floor. Yeah, right there. Yeah, okay, the construction single. Okay, so uh, this is simply because you can actually repel on the garage. If you go all the way to the south, Cyan, all the way. All there you go. That repel right there, that's why that castle barricade's there. Because if you're able to get on that and get rid of the soft uh, barricade that's usually there, you can just hold across through construction, and not a, a single person's going to be able to rotate through there at all. So obviously negating that issue the sonics are very much aware of the extended play over towards cash so i think that's going to be an immediate priority for them at the beginning of the overtime round here njr along with shuttle will be the players taking on that extended roam and attacking it at least for the time being looks like it's going to be gomfy and super trying to make their way over to that side of the map it'll be a slow process of course they don't know exactly how aggressive players like njr are going to try and be with this hold so a little bit of a clearing drill here as they have to work their way all the way through Logi first and probably open up the back wall. Well, Sonic's good on time right now and very slow beginnings. We haven't seen a round really start off like this without at least some initial face checking going on in a little bit. So we'll see if the Sonics are able to make good use of this time. They've already worked their way through quite easily. Not even worried about the Rome game right now. They're strictly worried about what's going on downstairs. Super already utilizing both of his hard breach utilities and easily now worried about the kitchen hatch. Shuttle rotating back inside. Are they going to be able to keep this locked down? Shuttle still has two impacts and that should be all she wrote for the hard destruction. And it is going to be. No one can long any longer get the kitchen hatch open. This is some major problems for the Sonics. We'll see how the Sonics can try to work past this. They've already tried once to just go for a horizontal execute here without having the adequate top-down angles they needed to work into the site. And it did not go very well, at least to start off with here. Disrupt was able to call it relatively quickly. We'll see if we'll have a repeat of that or if Sonics can meet their mark and find the entries they need. They will open up the Moto Castle Barricade there, which should give them greater access to Church. Easily will immediately take the mantle on that one and succeed in it as well as he finds the opening pick on NJR. He knows he's got another player sitting right behind this barricade, but doesn't want to test his luck on an actual gunfight versus it right now. So goes back to the Moto position. In the meanwhile, other players from the Sonics are getting in position with him as well as getting ready to push back Blue as well. Reed needs to be ready for the challenge as not only he have to deal with this he's got pressure coming in from behind him it's two kills oh. from him that shuts down the push but that's not enough you still have the man planting on the side as retro rotates back in and takes down the only other player for the sonics in this fight everything falls to super now they do allow him to get the plan onto the ground they're trying to execute him as soon as he swings out from that position but he's got no reason to leave this he's got a diffuser on the ground as well as the capability to clutch but it's not going to get that far shuttle shuts it down after he loses one of his teammates and that's going to be the initial round of ot going to disrupt they have plenty of time for this counter diffuse. Extremely strong showing from Disrupt. Really nice call as well to adjust and come back downstairs, utilizing that utility to keep the kitchen hatch locked. A lot of strong stuff there for DG inside of their decision making. But for the Sonics, it really went down to that hard destruction. That's going to be a really, really hard round to try and combat. Uh, but I will say this, for what it's worth, they did a very, very good job of adapting to what was going on. Obviously, they run out of hard destruction. They can't get that kitchen hatch open anymore. So what do they do? Well, they try to pressure inside of church while also applying some sort of pressure towards blue. It just ended up not working out in their favor, strictly because DG was ready for that back clear from the Sonics, winning almost every single one of those gunfights and then leaving down to the 1v3 for super as he's trying to put the case down it's going to be a little bit too much work for him way too many angles to worry about and disrupt are going to walk away with that defensive round one round away from pushing us on to cafe up one map sonics now get their defensive round up in front of them here and they'll have the single opportunity to try to make an impact from the defensive half before they've got to go back onto attack to try to claim a second round in succession from this one that's assuming they win this one of course going to be on the cash defense an area where sonics have excelled at quite a bit with their defenses but it's been a while since they've been on that half so we'll have to see if they're going to be just as ready to take it on here that downstairs hold proved quite well for them unfortunately the utility has not really found its point where it can be used as well as i think they would have hoped as of yet but maybe this could be the round where super and crew are able to finally line it up 
away from that can expect a very quick opening of the balcony or excuse me yeah of the balcony wall here due to the fact that again we don't have any real wall denial coming in from the defenders so it's not going to be too much of an effort for retro to just hop on up there throw down the charge and get rid of the wall so we're back to plane for plant and seeing if we can deny disrupt from trying to get that case down and the Sonics having quite a bit of utility to try and do so. We're still going to have super downstairs, just like we saw before with all that castle barricade set up. But this time, we only have one payload along for the ride on the Sonic side. One Nitro Cell in the pocket of easily here. He is going to be rocking that TCS G12, so I guess it is making a comeback. A little bit. A little bit. Just in the Sonics roster, at least for now. So I'm Iconic starting to wave. We'll wait to see if it spreads beyond there. Got it. Oh, like... I'm gonna hop in for a sec. I think I was just missing the animation as I was like, <laughs> wait a minute, you can't do that. <laughs> please don't hot breach this. Just please don't. Castle Barricade will prevent that. They do have the breaching charge on it. Shuttle will wait till he's out of the clearance zone here before he blows up that charge. Shuttle will also be opening up way of access from the inside of Logi too. So that's going to give greater play capability over to Disrupt once again. Iconic can see the construction push. He's more than likely spotted at least those two shadows. So he knows that there's going to be quite a bit coming from this direction and possibly an attempt being made to open up the wall with the ex Kairos at any moment too, since we still have J9O's utility to be used. Well, for the Sonics, they've centralized a lot of their utility around the cache area, specifically for Iconic. He had two shields as well as an Evil Eye, and he's now trying to prevent things from going on, and he can't. Oh no, the cache wall's now been opened. They expended one of the impacts as well. This is all going to be onto Iconic and what he can have happen with this Alda. This gun is something magical, especially in the proper hands. Iconic has been an absolute demon today, so let's see if those hands can possibly be his. Shuttle works downstairs into stock, just getting rid of that last shield this is going to make all of the pressure build inside of no. the area of cash and iconic gets taken down a little too a uh, little too much heat inside of the kitchen for him now they have cash control what are you going to do with the disrupt well, the cash will start to burn away as the last shield does too and oh my goodness easily just getting deleted njr with other pickup here too super was able to find the pick on to shuttle but it's really a small gesture at this point they have all the control they need for the plant just trying to stem the tides against the planter no they actually successfully deny it due to their position on the inside of security they also fend out the rotate this is all coming down to raid and he's not ready for the extra wrap from gomfi sonics what a recovery they're gonna take round 14 and we go to the final round of ot to settle the first map I had my hands over my mouth that entire time. That is not something that is supposed to happen. Disrupt have the crosses set up, but they were not worried about Gomfi's positioning inside of CCTV, and he's able to work up on the strong side of the server rack and get the kill that was so desperately needed from the Sonic side, able to actually stop the bleeding, stop the plant from happening in less than a second before it went down and able to win the Sonics out that round. The Sonics, oh man, looking quite strong inside of the clutch right now as they move on over to offense. We're going to have an operator that we haven't seen just yet either and most notably getting six picked out for the Ash. That might be a problem later on, but for Iconic right now, all of these bolts will fire true. Well, my cannot be played. He is banned. Anywhere that these arrows land is going to be pure chaos. So we'll see if the extra utility will make up the difference here for the Sonics and possibly allow them to execute even earlier because of those additional smokes and just capability to kind of control the defender's immediate attempt for a retake here. Reinforcements are going to look pretty normal here with regards to how Disrupt is holding things. We will see the garage panels getting shored up as well as the single panel on the garage rotate into sight. Away from that, nothing else crazy happening here. It's just your standard cache and CCTV reinforcements. Well, it went to the basement the last time. That was Disrupt's strongest site. Their weakest site being Master. So this is going to be the second site that obviously they're going to want to attempt. Uh, so far, DG have had a decent showing on CCTV, but the main problem last time is Sonic's bowled them over, got the plant down, and were able to play it very, very strong inside of that post plant. Disrupt really didn't have any chance to battle back. So I feel like this round is going to lean on those early frags who can start us off here and really set pace for this last round. Possibly an attempt to be made here at the trick. Shuttle is currently 0 for 2 on this. We'll see if he has better luck this time. And no, he's going to cancel that one out, realizing that he doesn't have the time to fully put the battery down on the ground. 
wall will get open. Shuttle will survive this time. More importantly, though, his last time he had some very unfortunate timing on trying to deny that. So at least they'll still remain at a full five-man roster despite the wall getting open. Now Shuttle just going to have to try his best to work things out with the MP7. Reed as well, trying to take out oh. some utility, but reveals himself and takes damage. Reed peeks on top of that, giving himself away to Gomfi. And now the first kill has been made, and it's in the favor of the Sonics. That was so well done by the Sonics, utilizing those fl uh, flame bolts from Iconic to force the smoke to move. Reed now down garage control over to the Sonics, or is it? NGR currently downstairs inside of Oil Pit. Lots of time on the board, so if they're able to get any of these frags back. This could be the game changer. Sonic still sitting outside. Haven't gotten control of Garage just yet, even though they have gotten that early kill. NGR still downstairs inside of Oil Pit. Let's see if anybody checks it. They do. He tries to get rid of the drone, but now they definitely know where NJR is. He's going to have to scamper off to greener pastures, because if he stays around that area, he's surely dead. The Sonics now have all the control needed to try and attempt an execute. One minute remaining to do it here. Sonics have plenty of time to make their effort into the site, and they can do it with slow pacing too. They can take plenty of time to figure out where their opponents are. Slevin still has both of his drones. He's still the capability for them to do that. Obviously, they'll have to be careful considering those are the only two drones they have to work with here. But oh no, things will start out with a trade here as NJR still has the angle from the garage doorway in order to bring his team back into the fold. And now, oh no, Iconic comes swinging in on the rappel. I thought NJR would be ready for that and might have heard it, but not the case. Easily has also been dropped in the meantime. Not exactly sure where that went down. It looks like on garage catwalk. They were able to revive him, so he's back up and into the fight now. A little under 30 seconds remaining. This is the benefit of all that time is that the Sonics can now make mistakes. They can pause and figure out what exactly is going wrong and figure out more importantly how to correct them before they re-attempt it again. Here comes the reswing now. Iconic moving into top blue takes out J90. They spot another player holding the front door. They've got to be careful as it's a dance around themselves, but it works out as the Sonics take control of the final round, take the 8-7 scoreline with it, and take the initial series lead at one to nothing. What a series in between these two so far. The Sonics looking very strong inside of that last round. And I don't know if this is telling what we're going to get on Cafe, but do remember the last time these two played each other, just yesterday, we saw Disrupt take this map off the Sonics. The Sonics coming back with a stronger game plan. They win it inside of overtime as they quickly move on to Cafe. Now we are going to have to see if they can take Cafe itself. A daunting task and they picked in it but having just stolen away their opponent's map pick maybe they can take their own as well stick with us guys we're gonna go to a short break when we return we'll have a brief analysis segment and then map number two is on the way we'll be right back with more right after this Alright, ladies and gentlemen, map number one, that was a grueling one, I'm gonna be honest, I thought that was map number two, the way it went down to the wire, and both teams refused to lose, but Clubhouse is done, is gone, Sonics walks away with the win, and this from Gaming, they're gonna be fighting for their life next map. Somebody had to pull out an absolute showstopper, and Sonics did a good job, but they had to do it while also knowing that they lost this map to Sonics just last night in a 7-3 affair. Now, DG find themselves on the back foot after their own map pick, have to go into Cafe, which is a map that they haven't won against the Sonics recently, and after you get beat after Ooh. such a long battle like this one, good lord, it's gonna be a hard-fought fight for Disrupt to regain any momentum at all. Yeah, I mean, this was a really long one, particularly for a team like Sonics who just played a bunch of uh, maps against Space Station. 
you know, I'm sure that they're starting to get a little bit tired, but they're long day ahead of them still. They got to keep their chins up. Um, this was a really uh, pretty back and forth, obviously. It's crazy how different clubhouse can oh play based on just the maps. Uh, a lot of great plays. Iconic, we talked about him a million times, but he really did pop off. I'm sure we'll take a look at him in the stats and just a really impressive map from the Sonics. Can we talk about the clutch moments for a second? Oh my 10. god, yep. 20 and 10? Yep. Iconic, the king, going off, but also on the flip side, NJR, Jesse, mm -hmm. watching players like this pop off like that is a treat. For sure, NJR had a great time, 5 and 2 for the opening uh, statistics, I think is even more impressive. You know, we did talk beforehand about how you can't let Sonics get that uh, opening pick, you can't let them run away with it, so I think NJR did a good job of stopping that. Um, and particularly, you know, without those, uh, you know, without that sledge ban, or without the sledge in, in play, I'm surprised Shuttle uh, managed to do so well. I'm really proud to see him uh, putting right, up the numbers. You're right, and take a look at the head-to-head. Slevin, you know, we all know Slevin is definitely one of the better players in NA, but even though he didn't have a map as good as NJR, he definitely had an impact. And Caliber Jacob, looking at this graphic right here, what does it tell you? Tells me we had a pretty good comparison heading into things. I think NJR can still create a lot of impact for Disrupt at, at, at any given moment, but Slubbin is still the one who can stand his ground, hold firm, and ensure oh, yeah. that he gets a Sonic's victory at the end of the day. It's I, I like this mostly because at the beginning of this match we said, "Hey, let's let's throw these two up and then see how they do." Even though NJR won <laughs> from a stats perspective, overall, Sonics had more team play and Slumman didn't have to create nearly as much impact as NJR did to get the win. Hey, Jacob, what's the stat line that matters? Your kills or what happens at the end of the map? Whatever the final score line is, Valley, there, Disrupt there didn't it get it done. All right, so unfortunate for NJR, but still an amazing effort. 15 kills, five entry frags, the man did everything possible to try to get that first map under Disrupt Gaming's belt, but it was not enough. Sonic's looking so good. But Jacob, there's something about Sonic's attack that you really liked. Me personally, I loved Gonfi. I said, Gonfi, he needs to wake up, but we saw him on Ash and he did pretty well, especially on CCTV where he helped win that round. Yeah, it's true. And the thing that we talked about prior to this map starting was Disrupt loving to really, really push their attacks down to the wire and then execute within that final 20 to 30 second window. So what were the Sonics doing? Saving so much of their utility and their gadgetry towards the end and not trying to waste time on roams as often as you might think. They decided to keep it locked in towards the site whenever they could because they knew that final push was going to come eventually. And that's where we saw most of the action take place on most of Disrupt's attacks. And that even happened in the one round that we got on overtime. Yeah, and Jesse, this was a strategic battle as much as it was a Gunner's Paradise, right? Mm -hmm. The great stats were good, but it was behind the gunfights, which is something that really mattered to you. And you wanted to talk about the bands and how that played a huge role in the way Clubhouse was played. Yeah, I mean, four frag grenades being taken off the board for the attackers is a huge deal, particularly on a map like Clubhouse. Uh, you know, people talked about, you know, maybe you could bring a Yana, but again, when you've got Clubhouse, you've got all the hard destructors and Thatcher on the board, you just can't justify fitting her into your lineup. So we saw a map really did uh, devolve into that 20 second meta that people like to talk about quite a bit. These were very late round rounds, right? Rounds that were decided in the last 20, 30 seconds pretty consistently. That roam clear, as Jacob was talking about, wasn't a huge focus for most of these rounds. Uh, it was really, you know, how much utility can you clear in a, like two and a half minutes? And then how gu good can you gun in 30 seconds, right? And yeah. so we saw this one go all the way. Uh, I think both teams definitely did show what they're capable of in a meta like this. And, you know, there were some really clutch final rounds that came out of it. So that was good to see. All right, Jesse, I have a small question for you. Just give me one word exactly how you feel. Sure. When you saw the Canadians go home and get eliminated. Um, The first loser round, how did you feel? Uh, I guess I was sad, but you know what? There's uh, there's three more teams here that can make me happy, so I tried to tried to forget about <laughs> right. it as quickly as possible. Now, Jacob, seeing the progress Disrupt has had so far before we head into map two, how are you going to feel if they just can't pull it out? Do they really need to wake up right now? They do, because they're heading back to Cafe. Need I remind everybody what Disrupt's record against the Sonics is on Cafe? Zero. Lay it out. <laughs> The answer is zero wins. Mm -hmm. They have 0% success rate against this team on this map, and they let it go through the ban phase. Yeah. And then lost Clubhouse. I'm not confident in Disrupt. All That's right. it. 
plain and simple the battleground didn't go in their favor their last map their home turf didn't go in their favor when we hyped them up about winning it yesterday and then being undefeated until today on clubhouse you want me to find any sort of confidence and disrupt it's going to have to come here hard quick and completely unexpected it has to be a full 180 turnaround from yesterday just like you showing up on the desk it was quick unexpected yeah but before we jump into that match there was a community poll if you follow our socials on twitter i love you jacob but the question was both of these teammates have gone rogue but which one will go off today the choices were between shadow and easily jacob who do you think got it sonics, sonics? i'm not gonna i'm, I'm not gonna mince words it? all right jesse what are you feeling yeah i don't think easily loses the twitter poll Easy doesn't lose. Real star. <laughs> All right, protection slapping up on the screen. Let's see who actually won, and I have it in front of me. Yeah. Ooh, this was a really good one. Easily, Never fifty-eight point three percent. Wow. All right, so map number two is about ready to go down, but you know what? I'm gonna send this over to our lovely casters. Blue has been so nice casting play by plays at the end of the rounds. And Stokes, love hearing your crisp voice on the mic. But fellas, go ahead and take it away. I can't wait. Thank you very much, Belly. And ladies and gentlemen, it is just about time for map number two between these two teams. A rematch that seems to be happening all too consistently. What did you say so, Stokes? As we go to Cafe yet again, just like we did yesterday between Disrupt and the Sonics. Extremely excited for this matchup, John, especially coming into Cafe. This is the time for Disrupt to prove a lot of people wrong about this team. They're extremely talented. They got a lot of young talent on this squad as well. If, you know, the time to step up to the plate is now, we need to see every single one of these members partake in that. We've been seeing some impressive performances. That's to be sure. Some really great rounds out of NJR, J9O, even looking back to yesterday's shuttle as well. But there's just been so much from the Sonics camp. Most notably in that previous map from Iconic, just firing on all cylinders and all 81 rounds as he was often doing from the defender's perspective as well. And that's just the beginning of it. There's other players from the Sonics we haven't even really seen a piece of in this series as of yet. I think Easley is a little bit understated in his impact that we could still see brought to the table. Slevin to a certain degree as well. We saw him performing, in my opinion, very, very well back in the initial series. There's a lot of dangerous aspects here that both these teams need to watch out for. And there's no more delay, guys. It's time. Let's get into the second map. See if we have ourselves yet another 2-0 or if Disrupt has some fight left in them to bring it back, back, excuse me, on the Sonic's map pick. Well, we're going to be starting things off with a Nomad ban. Pretty expected coming in from Disrupt, especially on Cafe. We've seen the effect that it has on the Sonics, but within these recent series, I mean, it really seems to have gone to the wayside. I mean, the Nomad ban not having nearly the same effect uh, inside of the SSG game as we've seen prior, uh, especially with how, you know, potent we saw them be with that line pickup onto Super. Some more bans pouring in now, Capitao and Wumai getting banned out from the Sonics. A uh, little count, well, not exactly counterintuitive, but just a checks, you know, ban with the Capitao, just making sure that if they do want to take the Wumai away, they don't give up something else that can be utilized by disrupt later on maestro going to be our last band here and again that's going to be even you know stronger than it usually is simply because echo is banned worldwide right now kind of the the power combo there of well my jaeger proves itself oftentimes to be too much to deal with especially in sites which can be a little bit more claustrophobic which can be things like reading room and the kitchen on this map so she's going to get rid of one also removes that deployable shield and makes the player that would normally be on well my a little bit less self-sufficient can't single-handedly go for the pixel setup anymore now it needs the assistance from another teammate whether it's going to be smoke bringing the barricade or another operator as well just basically makes things a little bit more complicated even though the actual operator band does make much sense when you look at the capital knockout as well so definitely still aligns pretty well with the overall goals for disrupt here and and we'll have to see how well they can channel this into a round win as they're starting out on defense and they're going to go right into the kitchen for our very first round on map two well, we're already going to see some early adaptations from the Sonics like we talked about before. Nomad off the board means that Super's got to go somewhere else, and he's going to go right back to his tried and true. We're sitting back on the line with those EU1Ds, ready and waiting 
to affect these disrupt members and see if they can get some picks off of those disrupt though not doing anything too out of the ordinary they are going to have the rotate for bakery so they're definitely going to be playing for this front take but with the sonics lineup they have access to a lot of different means in order to try and gain access to the site i don't even think that they're going to be going for bakery at all honestly with this lineup it really seems as though this could be a white take here with that freezer drop that a lot of teams are starting to use that's going to be dangerous of course since we still have the vip hold set up by j9o he's going to be sitting in the back there meaning that he'll also be supported by players like njr the sonics realize this they pretty much immediately throw one of their drones into the whiskey bar window so iconic's going to be able to see all this still keeps the drone alive for a pretty long time too so he's going to have a very good idea as far as what this looks like slevin will swing into coat check in the meantime and start things out with a bang iconic though is going to fall as he also tries to get aggressive early on against said vip hold and this time he'll fail and that's going to be the sledge off the board this time not banned out but still on the bench anyways and that's going to be problematic for the sonics that's their main soft destructor off the board they still have access to zofia and ash obviously these two more of a swiss army knife when it comes to the soft destruction department they are kind of good at everything but not elite at anything you know what i mean so when it comes to this vertical play it's not going to work out very well for them they're going to be limited on the angles that they can possibly take up mainly because there's no grenades for this offense any longer so any of the evil eyes or anything else to exist or excuse me any of the ex, uh, equipment required uh, to use an explosive on is going to need their soft destruction otherwise it's going to be allowed to exist half the round now gone j9 still with control over vip although he needs to be very careful with it because he no longer has his support player would normally be there to help him out. They've rotated NJR in a position to assist with this as well, though, so he's not completely out in the open. It just means that at least one part of the maps can be a little bit weaker for attack when compared to before. The Sonic's still working on top-down pressure. We noted, of course, before that we lost the Sledge, but that doesn't seem to matter much when they have the ability to entry like this. Slevin moves forward quickly, is able to take out Reed this time around. And that's the man advantage going over to the Sonics. Will it stay that way is the question. Retro was hoping to find a trade from the inside of Prep Kitchen, but he is going to get spotted out by a drone. Panic retreats, but that retreat will put him in a position to trade as well. He takes down Slevin. He'll get spotted out one more time by a drone here. Doesn't look like there's any other fights awaiting him, but at the same time, the Sonics still have a few tricks up their sleeve. Most notably, Gomfi and Easley's position can still net them quite a bit of map control, and we're going to see just that come into play right here. J9 O was not expected to retreat from VIP, however, so he's going to start to turn this back around. A beautiful third kill being found from him as he's able to take down Super. Leaves only Easley versus J9 O, both players separate from each oh! other, but J9 O out of nowhere flicks into the opening, takes down Easley, and secures the round for disrupt what a round from the rookie of j9 earning the paycheck right there john that's how it's done worried about every single angle possible that could have been taken up by the offense and brings that one back from the depths assume that one was falling into the sonic side of things but i was very mistaken especially after how harsh of an execute the sonics had getting every single one of those kills practically gifted to them utilizing those ee1d so well and especially slebin with those two early kills off of that info game from the sonics you thought they had it but when j9 still alive apparently there's still a chance especially when he's got that 1.5 on all right, so a bit of a surprising start, I think, more than anything there for the Sonics, given that they had great positioning, thought they would have been able to work their way into the site with said positioning, especially over by, like, the red and bakery areas. They were really in control of the round there. However, failed to account for the one thing that they hyper-focused on at the beginning of the round, and that was the VIP player who was able to rotate back and find massive impact to completely counter out the site push. Beautiful work by j 9 o he gets the job done to bring his team back from the depths of round number one. Now we'll get to see if he can try to do some of the same on round number two, where he'll have to extend his grasp a little bit more, as he'll more than likely be a part of the cocktail room. Yeah, most more than likely. They're going to be dedicating some ADSs up here, along with more than likely some deployable shields. We'll see how this works out for Disrupt. They have some good soft destruction up here to be able to support their anchor players downstairs inside of reading as well as shuttle on the pulse 
to be able to get them some intel on the long bar area. There's a lot of things going on here for Disrupt, and it's a lot of really strong things. Shadow can actually play this position in a really, really, you know, good manner, mostly based off of that Nitro Cell as well as that information. Uh, the thing that could prove to be problematic for the Sonics is trying to get a read on him, mainly because IQ has really worked herself out of the meta. Even though we talk about the G8 all the time, these Pulse players are allowed to get away with a lot right now now simply because of how much utility you need on that offense man unfortunately that utility often does not include the electronic scanner she just does not bring enough in her kit to be useful right now when you consider the relative info that drones can now provide for you especially with the ping 2.0 system allowing you to accurately ping gadget locations now makes it a lot easier to isolate those out and possibly not even need this scanner to figure out their exact positions from different POVs. Iconic will find a nice nade opener here, but just as nice of a response swing from NJR. He'll get revealed by the E1D, but that matters not when he's cleared out the immediate threat in the area. Slevin's also going to take some heat here too, as he'll go into a down state. But you see that NJR actually nearly gets caught, but no, he's able to re peek <laughs> out from the very same window, taking down Iconic. Shuttle also able to finish off a player with the Nitro, bring Sonics down to just two now. And in fact, he's is going to start to bring the numbers down a bit more here as he finds retro at least so we'll go down into a 2v3 with the sonics having the third floor control that they need oh this is a really really strong map so far from disrupt it seems as though they really fixed some of those errors that they were talking about yesterday with the evil waffle inside of that interview saying that they were going to go back to the drawing board see what they could possibly do to fix up some things try and right the ship and make it to port and right now it's working out really well j9 making things even more difficult now for super as easily gets taken down one versus three but i don't see it going too well case is down on white stairs no longer having any ee1ds but he's got three stun grenades so it could possibly make some good use of that but that's all she wrote for that one j9 with his second kill of the round claims a second round for disrupt as well some aggressive stances being put up mainly by NJR. Some beautiful work at the White Stairs window from him. Just so many players from Sonics trying to test their luck in that duel and never enough pressure coming down the actual white hallway to put it back on the NJR. Only at the very end of that sequence when he nearly got himself killed by trying to check for additional pressure coming towards Cocktail. That was the only time he really took a lot of fire back. But even then, he was able to peek right back up, get his second kill on the round and still maintain up until the very end as he was able to completely fall back back at that point rest of the team did some great work at delaying things of a cocktail as well obviously it was a bit more mixed success there but overall the hold at white stairs is what seals the deal for disrupt and allows them to maintain control and eventually get the second round up on the board yeah, it was extremely strong overall. And like you were saying, the white control was the uh, the main thing that helped them a lot inside of that round. And Disrupt adjusted for that control extremely well. Sonics take over the top floor. Disrupt adjusts downstairs while also getting those picks and playing through those vertical holes that they had set up, especially for that cocktail door. They had a lot of avenues shut down for the Sonics to try and gain access to. And the Sonics were caught off guard quite often, losing a lot of bodies earlier on, eventually working down to easily and super which it's going to be very difficult trying to fight down into reading with four members still alive and a lot of utility inside of their pockets last couple seconds of the setup here is finally we're up on the actual third floor defense for disrupt and take a look at things see if there's going to be anything super crazy coming out here i do notice that the half wall end of freezer is going to be left bare right there same can be said for the bathroom wall in fact i think well yeah Wow, this is this is an interesting one. They've created two little cubicles here between the bathroom setup and the freezer setup where now they can try to take duels individually, but losing one doesn't necessarily guarantee that the other is lost as well due to that double wall setup in between them. Yeah, this really hinges on what Retro is able to produce here. And Retro is also being supported by uh, Shuttle inside of Pixel. You can also see Shuttle has a backup plan as well. Somebody really needs to play that white window for the Sonics. Otherwise, Shuttle's going to be able to get away with a lot here. He has a lot of angles which Sonics are going to have to worry about, but that's on all fronts. This is also within the freezer as well as everywhere else that you see Disrupt standing close to Christmas. So the biggest issue that's going to pop up by double reinforcing those walls is that Shuttle and NJR won't have a clean rotate back to the site. They'll have to maintain white stairs control. And, oh, what a shot from NJR. Say oh. goodbye. <laughs> wow. The timing on that 
for NJR to get away with that kill and then not suffer the consequences of the frag grenade is absolutely hilarious. Shuttle just getting the bad luck out of the draw right there as he's going to go down to the frag, taking damage really for NJR's own return that he sent on the easily. And just siege things, but <laughs> the problem is now is Easley's off the board, John. And that's the only hard destructor that the offense has. They have only soft destruction as well as super on the lion now. So it's going to be all funnels. But the main problem is, is that that was never the plan from the jump for disrupt. They want to try and hold all of these angles and contest them in with very, very strong angles. I mean, look at this right here from NJR. Almost a perfect angle from the bathroom all the way to this window. And he's going to get one as soon as he comes oh, in the window. Oh. NJR actually gets two. Iconic and Goffy both eat the dirt. That's case down on stage. And disrupt is just looking too strong so far. NJR with an absolutely beautiful lineup here. The remaining players from the Sonics are stunted. They don't know how to approach this. They don't know what's safe and what's not. Slept oh, a nice return from him after he takes some damage from behind that mirror window. Easily sends the damage right back onto his opponent there. Beautiful stuff, but is it enough for them to make up the difference within this round? They're still dealing with smoke charges being thrown at them. They've cleared out the defender balcony, but now they need to work their way forward and go for a plan. There are no nitro cells. They don't have to worry about that, but they do have to worry about a proactive retake because they're still behind on man count. Slevin can only take one to two more shots here, but regardless, he's going to win out the next engagement without taking any additional damage. Down to the last 15 seconds of the round, NJR finally completes the kill on the Slevin, and he's going to follow it up with one on a super as well. That's an ace from NJR as he dominates the Sonics roster. NJR all over the field taking him down with some beautiful shots. I think every single one of those engagements was a highlight worthy play. I mean, we're talking the bathroom kills as well as that early engagement that he had inside of Pixel. Wrap it up with a nice bow, why don't you, inside a freezer. And we have yet another disrupt round as they perfect their sight triangle. We're headed back downstairs to kitchen. The Sonics running into a lot of problems here and what disrupt are able to provide on their defense for cafe sonics need to figure out a solution to these problems they need to figure it out very very quickly they can't roll through this half with only one to two rounds and call that a relative success to build off of in the second half this has been all disrupt all day so far and it doesn't show signs of a turnaround anytime soon the good news is siege is a game played on a round by round basis and there's still plenty of ample opportunities for the sonics to start to bring it back and make this a very, very winnable 3-3 three, three scoreline if they can win out the next three rounds. But beyond that, they are going to be looking down the barrel of a very, very tough comeback if they continue to drop these rounds to, so far, what has been some very, very beautiful setups from Disra. Yeah, the good news for hashtag Sonic Boom is that they've seen every single one of these sites now. So they know what they're walking into for the most part, unless Disrupt obviously adopts something else into the lineup. Uh, for instance, right here, we have Reed on dock. That's something that we haven't seen them utilize just yet. He's going to be playing up inside of Bakery. So we could see some, you know, hotly contested gunfights up here. But overall, the Sonics know what they're getting themselves into. This is the time for them to start getting these rounds and making it work. Let's see if they're going to be able to do just that. Top clear is first on the agenda here for the Sonics, as you guys should be no stranger to this strategy by now. If Cafe is off in a map, you need to clear from the top down, regardless of which site is being played. And this round is going to be no different. There is one or two players hiding out either on top of or near the bakery side building as well here. So we'll see exactly what the plan is going to be with that, whether they will try to hop in through the main bakery door later, whether it's just overwatch on the windows right now to make sure no one tries to maneuver up the red stairs and pull off a flank against the push from the Sonics here. So far, it looks like things are proceeding in a very straightforward fashion, though, because Disrupt has a very horizontal hold once again downstairs. And that's actually going to prove to be quite strong up against what the Sonics are doing. The last time we just saw them mostly fall to gunfights, there was really no execute that went on. This time, though, I think we're going to be getting to that. They're currently worried about the freezer hatch. They're going to get control of it, but there's still some utility inside a site that they're going to have to worry about, as well as the VIP player. But they've already adjusted for that cause. NGR getting pushed back, but we do still have the shield here alongside a smoke player. I do believe Jane nine 
playing inside a VIP. And he doesn't even have the shotgun. He's got the FMG9 instead. We've been seeing a lot of smoke players, especially today, utilizing this weapon. And honestly, it's quite strong, especially with that 1.5 at range. It adds a lot to Smoke's kit and makes it where he can contest a lot more of those angles. Iconic nearly getting shut down there by a nitro cell, which was kind of pre-placed. was hoping it would line up a little better with his position, but doesn't end up being the case. So he'll only suffer about 10 to 15 damage from that at the end of the day. Iconic with the lineup now. Was getting prepared right there to chuck a nade, but he wants to double check things with his drone that he also has on the site. That's actually very convenient considering he has access to the top down locations. So he can not only scan everything that he's just opened up, but obviously he can find the precise positions of any players down below to really hone in where he needs to try and chuck these two nades that are still sitting in his arsenal right now. So a bit more sledge work to be done as he does get the relative position of a few players. Retro is going to get spotted out by the EE1D, but J9, oh, once again on that smoke, finding massive impact he will finally get traded but even with him going down njr immediately counter trades it iconic gonna drop down the hatch trying to make a play from the inside he just does it takes out njr gets a little bit too aggressive though as he tries to swing once more and that goes right into retro's crosshair the last minute alive gumby doesn't stand much of a chance either as retro will take him out and disrupt will still control these sites with relative ease a fourth one now in their pocket oh man the sonics just not able to figure out this Rubik's Cube. It's been jumbled too much, John. Not able to figure it out. And right now, Disrupt well in the lead. And it hasn't even been necessarily any change up inside of their game plan. It's really been just sticking to the plan and playing it well. Every single time that the Sonics try and adapt to what's going on, it seems that DG has already thought of it and they've moved themselves in the way. They become that obstacle and usually end up taking some lives with them. Most notably, J9 and Let that oh sing at the end baby that guy is playing off the hinges right now eight three and one on these sas operators if he continues on like that we could be quickly seeing villa definitely looking like it's the case the revenge tour here for disrupt on their defensive half of cafe they are not letting anything get by them here and they're gonna let that trend continue back up to the second floor hold now with the third floor not too much further behind on the round next to this one We'll see if they can find success in the library once again with the third floor hold following that one up on the sixth round. The best area where Sonics had success here was in the actual cocktail push. Still suffered some trades, but overall were able to get control here. Where they fell victim was over on the white stairs where NJR was able to have a field day with the window there finding massive impact against the Sonics, who to be fair, should have been able to pick him relatively easily, but just could not line up the shots for some reason and allowing him to get two kills from the inside of the window put a massive dent in what was otherwise an okay push from the Sonics up until that point. Yeah, exactly. It just seems like every single time that the, th the Sonics are on the threshold of going for their execute, a problem happens. Somebody dies. Some utility is botched. Just Somebody gets right away now, with the something. Sonics... Like yeah, exactly. The Sonics, it just seems that their their luck train when it comes to timing has stopped and they got to go back to those basics. But right now, it really truly is Disrupt just playing very, very good Siege. They are firing on all cylinders. The trade game's perfect. And they're slowing down the Sonics on a lot of fronts. Again, every single time that Sonics step up to the plate, Disrupt are able to just throw one right into the mitt. Lemon's going to move himself up to the roof here. But a little bit of a check on the third floor first just to make sure that there's no utility takes that. I believe that was a camera hiding out on the wall right there thrown by Reed. So we'll get rid of that relatively quickly. Deny the intel that they would have had onto the balcony. More importantly, that window and possibly open up a world where Slebin can maybe sneak in either through this window or the library doors down below as well. The rest of the team, though, has moved in through your standard top red hatch entry, and they're going to go through this quickly, looking for their way forward here. Slebin once again taking up the angle, but there's that jump out once again. Players are dropping like flies. NJR dies on the run out to a Claymore. We're going to see Retro still holding control at the very edge of Whitehall here just by the entrance to Cocktail, and I believe that's it. Gomfi and Sled were the two main players looking to push back in. There should be one more generally in the area up here and that's going to be easily and iconic over on the extremities of this push, but they failed to take control of what they needed here. Retro's still going to be an obstacle and there's just over a minute remaining on the clock now. There's also going to be additional White Stairs presence here. J9 will thrive upon it. He moves up, takes down Super. Iconic's also going to get dropped here. It's just on easily and he won't last oh very long either. Disrupt or on a tear right now. 
This is just, oh my goodness gracious, disrupt gaming all over the map right now, John. They are taking Sonics to school when it comes to the defensive playstyle of Cafe. Very, very patient, but yet aggressive at the proper moments, able to capitalize on the errors that the Sonics are making, winning these gunfights, and creating a whole hell of a lot of chaos along the way. Like you were saying, players dropping like flies inside of Cocktail, but all of that was just a really big buildup to the retro highlight reel, where he was able to get so many kills using that smoke per utility to perfection. There was a lot of things going on upstairs, but you have to give it to Retro inside of Stacks. 5-0 is the scoreline. A potential for a 6-0 is very, very realistic now. Is In fact, Disruptor not going to go to the third floor. They're going to round the entire site matrix here and work their way into the fourth and final site that they have available. It's the second floor site, which actually involves technically one of the two sites, which they just defended in the last round. But there's a little like exception to the rule here where it's technically another site, so it doesn't get locked away. Just don't worry about it if you don't play Siege. If you play Siege, you understand it. Anyway, Sonics will once again have to attack you either accept the second it or floor. You don't. <laughs> and we'll see how it goes. Apologies, bro, but no, oh, no, I completely good. agree with you. Uh, you. You either accept or you don't. Was, this is one of the very rare cases inside of Siege where one bomb site is used twice for two different bomb sites. If that makes sense, it's a very hard thing to explain. But basically, dining's used for two different areas that you can utilize on this map. So. Pretty cool little thing about cafe, but you have to defend the sites in a completely different manner and disrupt is already set up for that. You have to worry about this area, which is either known as mining or engine, depending on who you are. So disrupt have set that up with some, not only footholds along the floor, but also a mirror window and a nitro cell on retro. So this is going to be a pretty strong setup here for disrupt. They just have to make sure to not give up Christmas too early here. And that's exactly why we see Reed playing inside of stacks with this mirror window set up they really need to adhere to that otherwise they could run into some major problems but the problems have already started john they bullied their way inside they take down the mirror planner uh player easily already planting inside of engine and now dg need to try and fight their way back into sight but i don't think that they were ready for this guffy's already inside of dining and it's already done and dusted it's a one versus five for njr as he already knows what's going to happen checks the crouch key a couple of times bails over heaven and now now, running into some major problems. Got the first one inside of Pillars, but it's not even going to matter. Iconic with a very quick kill and a flawless round for the Sonics as they bully their way into Engine. So that's different. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of a departure from what we've been working with prior to that, but... I don't know where that more, was, but hey. More credit <laughs> to the Sonics, right? They find a gaping hole in the defense for Disrupt there, and that if they just get the pick onto that Mira player, the site's open for the taking... Pretty much everybody else is either on the opposite side of the building or they're upstairs worrying about a push from the hatches. So they're going to be able to just hop right in, have easy security. The part that really seals the deal as well is Gomfi swinging in and getting himself the, uh, excuse me, getting himself fireplace control because the members of DG that were rotating in had no expectation of him to be that far up that early on. He really seals the deal and kills any attempt at a retake after they get the diffuser onto the ground. And it just turns into an absolute slaughter against the members members of disrupt something that we really hadn't seen up until that very round great stuff from the sonics there definitely gives them a bit of a confidence boost now as they're jumping onto defense for the first time we'll see if the side swap can possibly assist them in any way because right now they need to be wishing on a lucky star they're down four rounds disrupt is one round away from pushing us to map point. Granted, Sonic still up in the series, taking our first map on Clubhouse in 8-7 fashion. So it can possibly ride this one out for the long haul, play for that best of three, but I highly doubt that's what we're going to see. The Sonics want to close it out here so that they can be the first ones to move down to that best of five to play up against SSG later on today. It's in between these two teams on who can possibly get it done. And right now, it's looking more like the Sonics than I initially thought here on Cafe after that last round, but we could just chalk that up to a little bit of a debacle with Disrupt on how they were handling that site pressure. Just left Bandit alone for a little bit too long inside of train.
Ignoring the previous round, though, there's still a massive amount of effort that the Sonics need to put in here in order to come back against Disrupt. Five rounds in a row on defense now puts them in the great position. They only need to win two of these attacks, and they have already secured themselves map number three. For the Sonics, they need to win pretty much every single one of these rounds and can only give up a single one if they want to have hopes of just taking this to overtime let alone trying to win this in regulation. They need to win pretty much every single round in the half. Yes, they do. And the good news is they're going on to the side that is absolutely favored. We just saw Disrupt run shop on Sonics on the defensive side of Cafe. Let's see if the Sonics can get away with anything here. Very similar setups as well, but instead having the smoke player Gomfi with the FMG9 and that 1.5. So seems as though Disrupt want to worry about this top clear for right now. The Sonics just sitting patiently and seeing what the first initial step is going to be for Disrupt. Slubman just kind of face checking, see if there's going to be any duels that'll present themselves from across in Cigar. There is presence here from Disrupt, so more than likely he has some intel to indicate that there's players over there. Just the timing not really going to line up too well with the current positions of the players. Retro in the meanwhile with a nice spot through the windows here, able to isolate out Super's position just on the outside of Engine, taking him down and eliminating the Mira play for the rest of this round. That does not mean the Miras are gone themselves. Those black mirrors are still going to be a problem for the rest of the pushers here on Disrupt's roster. Away from that, though, Frag is going to go over towards the top of white. Should deal with it. Another smoke charge will go off against Shuttle. He's also going to chuck the Frag Grenade in. Doesn't look like that did much to Gomfi. Might have gotten eaten up by something on the way. I think there might be an ADS in the area. And so Gomfi will continue to maintain this position. He's out of smoke charges now, though, so he is going to have to take a fight, and he'll lose the very first one. J9-0 will Ooh. find success, and he pushes it even further, taking out the second player holding Cocktail as well. Did not expect that one to come through by J9, but as I said earlier, you got to make sure to let that O ring because he is all over the board here on Cafe. Easily picks up Retro. The Sonic's trying to battle back. That's going to be the very first kill of this round for them. It's down to Iconic and Easily in this two versus four now. With minimal time, DG still need to get some sight control and get this Diffuser down. The Sonics have already adjusted for this, though. Most notably, Easily going towards Dark right now, and this is definitely an area that you want to play when it comes down to this crunch time. He has so many options here to try and rotate away, and now it's going to be DG all in on engine. Shuttle walks in, sledges open the door, but now they need to get this case planted. Reed doesn't even have what? it. Oh no, what just happened right there? They lost track of where the case was. I think he was the last one in the door. He was, and he didn't have time to cross and start the plant. Well, that's just a massive mistake being made there in the oh. disrupt camp. That was a two v. That was a one v four, mind you. That we were at at that point. Easily had lost his other teammate. There was no one else up. Easily was making the hail mary play to try and kill the planter, but there was never even a plant to begin with. I mean, for for the Sonics, you got to be laughing straight to the bank with that round. But for DG, that's head and hands level of Crying miscommunication the there. Bank is what that is. <laughs> yes, indeed. I don't cry to the bank very often unless my bank account's zero. So that's that's got to be a really sad day for Disrupt. But as we all saw, most definitely. They're going to flash the gridlock again and six pick away to the Dokabi. But we're just going to chalk that up as a botch and move on from that because there's really nothing else to say. Disrupt up 4-1. They only have to worry about easily with an ump inside of Dark Spot. I, I, again, there's nothing there that tells you that Disrupt should have shouldn't have gotten away with that round so it, again just very very big miscommunication meanwhile in the sonics camp they will take those every single second of the day <laughs> so they will have a second round in their arsenal now we'll be able to work this comeback a little bit more beautifully here three more rounds to go before they tie it up at five to five we'll see what the setup looks like here for the sonics as they're going to put quite a bit of emphasis on defending that small bakery position right there even having a bandit battery go down on top of it away from that though nothing crazy with the reinforcement game coming in here though we are going to see that one wall of left soft that allows for the player that's on red stairs right now to rotate back at the need should arise and instantly as we switch into the action here we are going to see an ex kairos going to one of the garage walls that's going to put a lot of extra pressure onto iconic but iconic wants the fight he's trying to swing out here taking a duel early on he'll have to quickly cancel that however as it's ultimately unsuccessful in trying to line up a shot against the player that was over by the white van. 
Kind of a very respectable beginning there for the Sonics, trying to take those early engagements and get those picks. And that's worked quite well against Disrupt when they are able to actually get those. As we were talking about previously, Disrupt and the Sonics battling against each other yesterday. So this truly is down to the battle of wits for these two teams, especially with the amount of maps that they have in between each other in recent history it's going to make things more difficult as we progress. NJR and the rest of Disrupt, though, have already gotten control of the mid floor. Now the priority going to be that vertical play as well as worrying about that freezer hatch. They have to keep the staircases locked down until later on into the round. Let's see if the Sonics just try and bide their time downstairs. More than likely what's going to happen is they are set up for that horizontal hold. So quite a bit of delay here before we see any action from Disrupt. Still spending a lot of time on their drone game and getting every player into position before they really think about throwing the aggression at the Sonics here. This is probably a good call too when you consider the way that things went in the last round and how executing too early might have given them a bit of false confidence about their situation. At the same time, you flip that point on its head as well. We'll talk about that later. Gomfi still patiently waiting from the Sonics. And he's not the only one. Quite a few players sitting back and kind of waiting for Disrupt to make the first move here. Disrupt still working on a lot of top-down pressure, since as we talked about before, Sledge is back in the game, and he's incredibly important to the success of this round, mainly because he just opens up so much play capability from inside of the site itself. I mean, look at that right now, what you can see from the top-down perspective. Quite a bit, unfortunately, hasn't allowed them to find all that much yet, minus, say, a couple of ADSs here, but there we go. J9 going to be able to strike true yet again. Finds himself the first pick of the round at about 45 seconds with the elimination of Easily. One of the best games we've seen from J9 in quite some time, and actually probably the best game I've seen J9O have since he was a sub for the Sonics, taking it straight to the bank like we were talking about earlier and making all these Sonics players just look real mad. Super now trying to contest inside a prep, but it's J9 once again. Retro on the other side of the map takes down Iconic. Gomfi and Slebin, the only two that remain, trying to take some gunfights now inside a site, but it's all let down to the man inside a bunker, but no plan left left j9 all across the board and john this is some elite level stuff some great stuff indeed <laughs> trying to make himself the master to his previous masters himself there considering that he was the sub for the team just a couple months back and it's working out beautifully j9 o bringing the performance of a lifetime to the table here and it's certainly possibly going to carry his team forward into the third and final map when you consider the scoreline we sit at now six to two just one more round is all the disrupt need and with a clean fashion that they were able to close out the previous round i would say round number seven at least at this point can't be too much further behind looks like it is indeed opposite day to day as both of these teams well for right now looking like they're going to take each other's maps and push us to villa uh, J9, once again, just lights out inside of this series so far. I mean, inside of eight rounds, folks, the guy is 16, 3, and 2. Not only is that one of the craziest SRVs that I've seen in some time, but that's also a 2.0 KPR. He's getting two kills per round right now. You never see that. Even when it comes to Bolo, we don't see that happen that often. That is something out of a story tale. So J9 showing up when Disrupt need him most. <laughs> the Sonics need to now battle back as they head back downstairs. To and this is actually like a really weird scoreline too when you look at the rest of Disrupt. Reed has zero kills and Shuttle has one. So, and NJR has 10. So that's just to showcase kind of the skewed matchup we're working with now. Now, I talked about this yesterday. That can be a problem, but we'll bring that up when it becomes more relevant because right now it doesn't seem to be much of an issue here for Disrupt having those two very heavy frag leaders in both NJR and J9O. It really feels as though they're letting J9O uh, adapt to the situation instead of really, you know, pushing him to do something because we've seen a lot of adaptations from him inside of what he's doing, especially inside of that last round, instead of pushing with the entire team on, you know, the, the uh, you know, uh, sink slash bunker area inside of site. He goes kitchen side instead and catches a lot of Sonic's members off guard. They were initially ready, but they only had super there to try and contest prep. J9 quickly dispatches him, then just walks into site. So it really seems as though the game sense is paying off for him right now. See how well this lower defense will work out yet again here for the Sonics. Was it leaving the hatch open will be an interesting wrinkle in this one, leaving a bit more room open for that Rome game to potentially find impact and then hopefully fall back while remaining unscathed in the process. You can see Super, for instance, sitting 
right on top of this fallback in the event he needs to use it but it's going to be some time before they catch anyone from disrupt they're still committed to that very slow clear that we have been seeing before just in the last round in fact we saw it from them here j9 still with the lineup he's expecting a reaction after taking out that banshee but in fact all that will happen is the two players that were on top of the hatch on the inside of dining room just fall back through that hatch ceding the control over to disrupt while the rest of their busy little drones finish out droning out the second floor here Really good drone game here from Disrupt, and it's too much for the Song Sonic's members to stick around for too long. So they're going to skimper on back to site, and this is going to allow Disrupt to get back inside of Train and start on that soft destruction once again. It's all up to Shuttle to break up most of this floor, and they don't have to worry about the Freezer Hatch anymore, though, since that reinforcement has been allocated somewhere else. So this Freezer Drop can definitely happen at any moment in time. It's mostly dependent on what they can possibly get for those early picks. 50 seconds remain here, and the first kill's been found by Slebin from the Sonics. Nice pickup indeed. That will certainly hurt the overall XQ potential, especially when you consider that it's one of the two players that have been bringing most of the impact for the team so far. J9-0 has been taken out this time before he's been able to find any impact against the Sonics roster. Iconic still patiently waiting down here at the bottom of VIP stairs as well. He's going to be waiting to see if there's any potential to pick up any frags. However, is he expecting the swing from his opponent? No, he's not. NJR picks up the first response, takes down Iconic, and is even able to survive the response swing from Gomfi. Gomfi can't do much against the hatch drop now he's going to try to get in position to do something about it throws in the nitro but he's too late on it the other players have already reached the other side of the wall they now need to rotate back in stop the eventual take of the site that's happening but again it's not enough it's kill after kill after kill from disrupt here all down to super who tries to sneak back into the site but it will not be successful and with that round one out it's going to be disrupt gaming that claims control over cafe and will tie up the series at one to one such a strong showing from DG inside of this series. Apparently being woke up by what happened on Clubhouse. And you can definitely tell that VOD review from yesterday that Evil Waffle was talking about paid off in massive amounts. I mean, they look so strong on Cafe. That's one of the best Cafe ga games I have ever seen Disrupt play. Certainly, once again, being able to correct the record and bring themselves back into a winning position. A bit of a gamble considering yesterday's and the previous results, but it seems, at least for now, to have paid off for the Disrupt camp. We'll have to see if it's going to be enough to bring them victory on our third map of Villa. Right after this, though, folks, we're once again going to go to a short break. Stick with us, though, as map number three is right around the corner here from the North American qualifiers for the November Major. Welcome back to the qualifiers for the NA Major that will take place next month, November 13th through the 15th. But before we get there, we need to figure out who the fourth team is going to be in that tournament. And so far, Space Station is waiting in the finals and Disrupt Gaming took it to a third map against the Sonics to see who's going to play against the world champs to make it to the NA qualifier and, I mean, excuse me, the NA Major. And right now, Disrupt, they're looking hot, Jacob. J9 went on a killing spree. This man went on a tear and tried to do his own impression of Iconic from the previous round. He came pretty darn close and we had significantly less rounds for him to have the chance to do it. He was in the double digit kill feed just like Iconic was. And something we brought up before this map started is there is so much young talent that both of these teams have. It's so cool to see them finally flex and show what they've got. Yeah, I mean, this highlight reel is really fun because like there's J9O, oh, oh, and NJR, and J9O, and Retro, and J9O, and J9O, and J9O. It's like, it's really <laughs> kind of just a frag movie here yep so take a look <laughs> take a look at the stats 
nobody on the Sonics got more than seven kills. I was gonna say ten, but you know that's <laughs> that's that's a lot we'll give. But disrupt. Jane, I know, and JR, they, they had a, a field day with them. Sonic's playing their fourth map in a row. It's got to be hard for them. It's something like a marathon right now, and they have to keep their heads in the game going into the third map. But talking about the young guns right now, Jesse, yeah. the, the, the youngins on <laughs> Disrupt Gaming, I mean, they showed up in the biggest way possible. Honestly, I would say that this is probably the most impressive stat line I've seen from a rookie so far. Three deaths. Okay, we, we've seen these players get, you know... Eight, 16 kills 18 kills whatever uh -huh. but a low amount of deaths is especially special for someone as aggressive as j9 yeah i mean he was taking so many gunfights and the, like the percentage that he won was just insane uh even in, like if you disclude that last round because you know the final round general ran in and died he was the opening death so he was 16 and 2 prior to that final round which is like you know it's a kill death ratio of two or what 8.0 8. That's insane. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Nobody gets stats like that. Jane, I know, I guess he does. And we talk a lot about like rookie of the year, rookie of the season. I think people talk about iconic, talk about NJR. They don't really talk about Jane, I know, as much, you know? And I think this was a huge argument is why we should be talking about Jane, I know. Not that Iconic or NJR played bad this map. Um, I think that NJR obviously having that ace, you know, nobody's going to forget about that, despite the fact that Jin I know had so many crazy plays. And Iconic, you know, on that first round that the Sonics won, I thought he was a huge part on that, getting the opening pick and then a couple more later on into the round. So, you know, great play from the rookies all around inside of this matchup. Uh, and I think it sort of shows the direction that Rainbow Six is going in. You know, these are two up-and-coming teams filled with up-and-coming players that are really making a splash in the NA scene. And it's great to see here in the qualifier. I'm so happy you said that. Jacob, <laughs> you talked a lot about adaptability, and Stokes even mentioned it when he was talking about J9. But for you, it's a specific reason. It has to do with their attack, right? Well, it had to be their attack because that's where they got the final nail in the coffin, ultimately. And they had to make a lot of adjustments from what they did in their game against the Sonics just last night and then from their previous matchup only a couple of weeks ago we hammer this home a lot because when you find two teams that meet on maps over and over again it typically tends to go one way or the other but both of these teams had to flip the script completely disrupt had to hold on to clubhouse but sonics were the ones that won that then the an inverse was the same again on cafe they needed something big this is exactly what we were talking about and it's restoring my faith valley a little bit in how disrupt was trying to approach this second day of the qualifier we heard waffle talk about it from before but this is giving me a glimmer of hope <laughs> all right so with the glimmer of hope um prediction wise going into this final map i really don't care you guys picked before we saw the way Clubhouse went down. We saw how Cafe ended. Oh, Jesse. Yeah. Who do you really think is going to go home now? This this is it. Listen, they've got the momentum. They've got all the frags in their favor. Disruptor looking so good. Sonics are tired. Okay. They're crumbling, but they're going to Villa. Sonics are going to take this game. All right, Jacob. Jacob, second elimination game. They're going home. Winner goes to the finals. Who's going to play against Space Station over there? I know there are going to be some people that are really rooting for the curse to take hold on this one, but somehow I still have a 100% prediction rate on broadcast. Okay. Sonics did a really good job against Space Station on Villa earlier, even though they couldn't eke out the win. I think second time's the charm for the guys in Pennsylvania. I think Sonics have this in the bag. Jesse, small question before we throw it to the casters. We're waiting for Stokes to get back. He went for a little sure. bathroom break, right? Nice. Um, <laughs> now, in regards to just exhaustion, they played against two teams. They played so many maps in a row. The Sonics have to be exhausted, but they have an aggressive play style, which really works out well for them. Do you think mm -hmm. they can maintain that one last map to make it to the end? I hope so. I mean, you've got to imagine that there will be a little bit of time between this final map and the grand final, so they'll hopefully have a little bit of time to recharge. You know, I think the support staff of the Sonics is just Joe, um, but he can do a lot to, like, amp these players up, and he really, uh, hopefully is talking to the players. Super's obviously, you know, a very commanding leader as well, so he's got to be, like, inspiring the team right now. And I get that it's been a long day, I get that they started bright and early, but uh, you've got to keep it going, right? And I think that yeah. uh, keeping the players' like momentum up and their spirits high, it's going to be really important to Sonics to not just throw this final map. Now, Jacob, I'm going to toss you a double-edged sword, okay? We saw mm. NJR, and we also saw J9 pop off. Usually that's a good thing, but the rest of the team, they are, they're not that involved, they're not racking up the kills. Their guns aren't really warmed up as the two guys on top of the leaderboards. Do you right. think we can see a full-fledged effort from Disrupt Gaming coming next map 
or do we need a full team effort to really shut down the Sonics because they're gonna bring it. Disrupt's always been a team that they've had one to two players do really, really well on a couple of maps. And then if you have a couple players at the bottom of the stat line or even kind of in the middle of the pack, they still manage to win maps that way. But Disrupt hasn't really had all of five of their squad mates pop off kind of in the same game. You obviously mm -hmm. want that to happen wherever you can, but if the kills are going towards some players and not more, then that's more of a sign that the guys on entry are the ones who are trying to get frags, are playing to their strengths and doing a pretty good job, unless the entry fraggers are the ones at the bottom of the scoreboard, then that's a bit of a different story, but it's usually been read. It's been guys who play in support roles, and if we want to flip the script and try to give more players kills, sure, there's probably an opportunity for the entire team to, to rise up, but they beat Mirage yesterday in two straight maps and there were still some people that didn't have positive kill death ratios and the last map is also proof of that. You don't need every member of the team to show up even though sometimes you would like to see it. Definitely right. So here it is. Game number three tiebreaker map. The Sonics and Disrupt Gaming the winners goes to the finals to face off against Space Age Gaming the losers. They lose out at their chance to go to the NA Major. So ladies and gentlemen get ready. I was going to say Kicks and Parker Stokes in blue. Take it away. <laughs> Wow. wow that's all right that means listen that means we're the better Oof. duo so. oh <laughs> all francais okay i see how that one goes okay well we got villa on the docket john i'm extremely excited for disrupt and sonic in the conclusion of this series who can possibly go off to face ssg we only have one map to figure it out personally speaking I'm feeling like the Sonics are coming in pretty hot on this one. We saw their Villa earlier today up against SSG. It seemed like they had a really good game plan coming into it. Very aggressive offense, defense, very tight knit. What are you thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, definitely looking strong for the Sonics, but at the same time, I know Disrupt brings a lot to the table on this map too. And some of it's a lot to play against, specifically some of their living room defenses have looked very, very strong in the past. And it was one of the first teams I saw where their opponents were actually having quite a bit of trouble getting around that. So we'll have to see if it'll be just as strong this time as it was a couple weeks ago when I had a chance to look at it. Let's find out though, folks. We're heading into it here. See if Disrupt can indeed complete their own comeback now and close this out in 2-1 fashion. Or if the Sonics will indeed complete the reverse sweep in the best of three, closing out these final two maps. First ban is already underway and it's going to be Ace getting knocked out first. Well, a lot different bands than what we saw the last time, but Disrupt with a Zofia ban. This is something that I believe we've been seeing Disrupt do for a while. It's either them or E United. Apologies on that, but I want to say it's Disrupt that we've seen ban this quite a few times. And this is going to be pretty strong, actually. Getting rid of one of the main soft destructors, it's going to have a similar effect to what we saw on Clubhouse with that sledge ban coming in. Disrupt also going to be getting rid of Wamai, so the Sonic's going to have two fresh bans coming in for this villa. Yeah, final ban coming up right now. More than likely, this could be the Maestro ban. We're going to follow the usual trends, and indeed it is. So falling right in line with that as they knock out Ace as well. Let's get into it, folks. The first round just a couple seconds away here. And it's time to see if the Sonics can get off to a good start. They do have the defensive half to begin with here in our final map. So should be able to get things off to a booming start, but we will see if that will hold true. They led themselves into quite a competitive match versus SSG just earlier on today, and now they've got to run it back once again. They're instantly going to go downstairs to their first defense as they'll head into dining room and kitchen. Yeah, looking back towards that Villa matchup, because it is going to be really telling of what we see inside of this matchup between DG and SQ here, uh, the Sonics really, really favored AVG in the matchup up against SSG. They only played Kitchen a single time and then Stat twice. So we didn't see a living room defense. We'll see if that is adopted into the lineup here for the Sonics later on into their defensive half. But as of right now, we're going to the very first site, starting us off here on Kitchen. I like this pickup, especially since they have the Nomad ban in play along with that Ace. This is going to make working Kitchen a lot easier for the Sonics because they're not going to have to so hotly can test that pantry area and worry about ace getting that single panel off so quickly let's take a look here now let's see if we are going to end up with anything super crazy here with the sonic's defense just that extended roam once again and that retake option it's going to present itself as they do these extra reinforcements you've also got the hole in the wall there which is going to add another facet to this allows for anybody that's playing out towards red stairs to rotate back in the event they need to do that so quite a bit once again very horizontal play style it's going to be opened up here for the sonics mainly on the first floor and as a result of that we're going to see probably a pretty quick clear of the second floor from disrupt 
Yeah, I'm assuming so as well. The Sonics have done a very good job on their defenses in the past here on Villa. The Sonics, or excuse me, the SSG gave them a run for their money though. So we'll see if Disrupt can possibly do the same. They're going to be providing a lot of things that'll assist them a lot inside of this round, especially. I mean, we have double soft destruction in the likes of two, you know, operators we don't see too, too often. Most notably, the Buck coming along with us and JR going to be on that shuttle back onto the sledge and J9 rocking the Ash. So a couple adjustments inside of, you know, what Disrupt is really bringing to the table here for Villa. I like the pickup here, especially with the applications that they, you know, have at their disposal with read and play with those EMPs. So Disrupt mostly going for a top execute as of right now. Need to clear out this top floor and start on this vertical control, but still have to worry about those flanks. That's exactly what these drones are going to be for. Slevin really hunting for a kill here right now as he's... That's really swinging his aim around, trying to see if anything will present itself. Not just as of yet, though. Disrupt still have yet to transition themselves down to the first floor. Super is very cautiously trying to dodge out of the way of all this soft destruction, which is currently being done. An important note on that, too. We've got not only the buck, but the sledge as well. So Disrupt, after dealing with the sledge ban earlier on, decided, okay, maybe we can work buck a little bit here and do our third map on top of our sledge. So this is going to add quite a bit. The soft destruction game more than anything it'll increase the speed with which they can get the job done and there we go there's their first target being found out super gets brought down to about 30 hp he does throw a nitro cell in response here and nade's gonna come down pretty close to him too he's trying to get out of the way of that oh he's lucky to be alive at this point with how close that was to him as he's now down at just a sliver of hp yeah, super knowing that he's probably not long for this world, especially with that nitro cell up there, wanted to make sure to get his utility off before he died. Damn near gets taken out by that frag grenade, but still allowed to exist as he rotates over into tarps. But the main problem is now for the Sonics is they've given up kitchen control. You can see two of the Sonics members currently inside of China trying to work their way in, but it's going to be very difficult for them. That single panel has now been handled by Retro. So... When it comes to trying to force your way into kitchen, not going to work out so well. DG now have a lot of vertical play going on. Nitro Cell goes off, almost takes NJR's life, but he gets away. Not exactly scot-free, easily working his way into kitchen. Do they even know he's here? He's adjusted up so close to the door. There's no way. Oh, there is. Retro Peaks takes him down, needs to start planting though. And this is where the problems could come in. If they get China access, Reed's gonna get taken down. And that's exactly what's going to happen. They walk in. That's a quad kill for Slebin, and Sonics walk out of the store with a round in their pocket. The Sonics with an interesting approach to be able to attack the site, worrying very minimally about all of the horizontal pressure that was pretty much a constant threat to them throughout the course of that round, and instead truly doubled down on the vertical play by bringing the two really focused soft destructors. They're able to open up pretty much that entire floorboard above them and then focus pretty much just on that uh, pantry push they did at the end of the round there in order to get their plan. And it actually works. It's messy. Don't get me wrong, but it works. And they were able to secure themselves a very nice first round of defenses. Yeah, that was really, really strong for what it's worth. I mean, like, it didn't seem as though it was going to work out. I thought that their last line of defense was going to be easily with that really nice adjustment inside of the kitchen area, but uh, it was not meant to be. Yeah. Uh, it was rather the other Sonics members that came back into sight and were able to disrupt the process uh -huh. of the offense. Uh, so we'll see if they're allowed to do that once again. It really seemed as though Disrupt was going to take that. They had the crosses set up, but their main problem was they didn't have the best overwatch when it came to their planter. It was very minimal, only being handled around pantry, along with some vertical play coming in from upstairs. But as John duly noted, that vertical play really not having anything to do with that round or its outcome. Yeah, so hopefully they can kind of clean that up a little bit because like i said the overall idea from disrupt wasn't terrible if they can get to mm -hmm. that position maybe with an extra like 10 to 20 seconds and take over a bit more of kitchen they can work it a bit more successfully but with the way that it was handled just a little bit too messy to actually lead to a one around there so i'm curious to see like you said if they can make another attempt at that if that's going to be their approach for dealing with the horizontal roam that we saw from the sonics in that previous round right there so let's take a look from disrupt now going up against i believe this is just an avg hold from the sonics roster here 
they'll rotate mm -hmm. upstairs now we're still going to see that added pressure on to trophy and statuary coming in at the same time so we have some of those reinforcements leading into masters so iconic's gonna try to get himself into a fight He's gotta be careful here though he has some support from slevin but there is potentially three players that are gonna be looking at him soon so already having dealt damage to j90 he does need to back away from this and play into a bit of a safer position now that he's been revealed yeah, Iconic, the, Iconic playing this extremely well. Also tries to hit the fade away, but doesn't get anything for it. Would have been cool if he did, though. Slevin now prioritizing the 90 window. Deals a little bit of damage, but not enough to kill anyone. Slevin going to receive more than he gives, but the Sonics actually have a really good read on what's going on on the offensive side here as they've got control of Trophy and Stat, but there's Valkyrie cameras that are still allowed to exist on this side of the map, being utilized by easily to read back to his teammates. So DG actually might be a lot more worse for wear than they initially thought. Half the round having gone by here now. Relatively calm round minus a couple of fights which have led to some chip damage being done about three different players. Two of those are on disrupt. So they're having to be really careful here because you've got some of your ace entries with J90 and Reed here taking quite a bit of damage early on. J90 is definitely the biggest one out of those two as he's on the Ash and is expected to take the first contact in a lot of these situations. So that no longer really being an option at low HP, Disrupt have to have someone else more than they can take up the mantle or at a minimum just have someone get very ready to trade out J90 should he go down on the initial push here. 45 seconds remain. They've cleared out a lot of the site. Should have enough control over Aviation in order to at least attempt a push from the Red Stairs side still not a lot of confidence brewing here we are waiting for one more bit of hard destruction to go off onto the study wall leading to the inside of aviation that should lock down and speaking of locking things down read with a very nice spot onto iconic trying to flank from astro stairs but with the opening that should lock down the player in gun vault and now allow for njr to move out here nitro cells go Ooh. out and that's a very good work as oh my goodness two more come rolling in out of absolutely nowhere easily is going to get down but so is njr reads immediately on top of the body but so is gomfy both those players will get revived super is able to catch retro though before anything else can be done now the plant going down they're right on top of each other it's such a dangerous stack right there and it leads to super's demise as the last player standing from disrupt tries his best to turn it around but it's too little too late and once again the sonics win it out on the timer what a round from the Sonics, leaning on that timer, as you just said, disrupt, go for the plant on vault door, but we're not ready for the maximum payload <laughs> that was about to be delivered from the Sonics. That's three nitro cells that just poured in there alongside a Goyo shield the, to try and prevent all of that from happening. The unfortunate part, at least from Disrupt's perspective, is that the initial strategy there of just stacking the EMP grenades on top of it, mm -hmm. that worked for the first nitro cell, they disabled it, but the second two <laughs> came rolling in right after the EMPs blew up and it was like oh well I guess we, we blew our load on that one a little bit too soon so maybe yeah. think about holding that third one for a little bit later on in the round next time or just stagger them a bit more Defenders, protect your bomb. yeah it could have been a major uh, success there for disrupt if that actually worked out into their favor but uh the, the main thing there for them was as you said the EMPs going off just a little too preemptively for those last set of nitro cells pouring in uh but I will say this the second nitro cell or the first nitro cell excuse me got caught by that second EMP right as it was about to explode yeah. like right when it was about to explode if you thought the plant earlier from retro should have went down that nitro cell should have went off there's been a a lot of things inside of this series so far that are just whimsical. It's some crazy stuff happening in between these two squads right now. The shot, the Sonics showing up on defense though, in amazing fashion, a very, very strong showing so far, able to close out these rounds that are neck and neck. All right, well, the Sonics stepping up to the plate for their third, third, third sight now. Excuse me, we've been casting for a while now. It's starting to get messy here with my words. <laughs> Anyway, third site defense for the Sonics is going to go over here towards Trophy. We'll see if they can complete their full roundabout before they head back to around, more than likely towards Kitchen for the next defense there on round number four. Already have some pressure building up for Disrupt trying to work their way into study early on, but there's just as much counteractive pressure from Gomfy. Oh. However, he's aiming way too low to the ground there, and NJR is going to be able to swoop right up on top of him, taking him out, along with some of the roam game here for the Sonics. Well, with only 30 seconds off the clock, I'm assuming he thought that the first thing in the door was going to be a drone. Yeah. But he was sorely mistaken because the first thing in the door is NJR with a C8, and he just rips the head off of Gonfi. Gonfi now no longer existing on that side of the map. 
but could have some possible problems here. Super can't jump from that window, so don't don't think that that's going to happen, but he could possibly get some kills if he peeks out there at the proper moment. Sonic still in good standing for the most part. Iconic going to be contesting benches with this Goyo shield. Has some assistance on red. Really liking this setup as well as the ADSs in tow to eat through a lot of these throwables. So the Sonics are going to be able to sit on this setup here for quite some time and really burn through a lot of this utility. So I've been making quite a bit of noise through footsteps as he goes up the stairs though. So more than likely Disruptor now aware of his position at top red. There you go. They're already pre-aimed onto his position. The thing is though, this is just a matter of wasting time. You've got another player here Two. that's now three players committed against this push from j9 and i believe he's got another teammate with him there too and they just aren't able to return anything if they try to push no matter the angle someone is going to be waiting for them so they've got to be very careful disrupt this is if they want to continue to try and execute through this route instead of falling back and say trying to take 90 control where they might be able to swoop around and pick up one of these guys and there we go now they're doing just that in fact so right on cue here j9 o is he's going to work out well to start with there is going to be a trade easily will take down njr but NJR just as much will take down Slevin before falling. Shuttle's going to move up, get into the same position where NJR just fell from. Easily still able to cut off the connector pressure if they try to go for trophy. And he'll block off 90 access with the smoke charge. This now allows him to move into connector if he wants to play to the inside of here, which it certainly looks like he does. And as he moves forward, oh no! Had a free kill onto a player on red stairs, but whips it due to the recoil on the SMG 11. A little bit of trouble dealing with the drone here too, but he's still at full HP and that's what matters for the time being, especially as we come down to the final 20 seconds. And Disrupt's got to get some work done here, John. Case currently on shuttle. Don't have too much utility, all except for the EMPs as well as the stuns on retro. So do have some sort of assistance as Iconic's going to go big with two. Can he get three? Oh my! He does indeed! It's all down to retro on concrete. Let's see if Iconic can possibly go for four. He has case control, but it's going to be all for naught. He can't get the last one, but if there was a split second more, you can bet your bottom dollar he would have done it iconic showing up big here on villa when the world needed him most iconic stepping up to the plate in a big way <laughs> putting who is ash if he this... says something like you suck i swear like <laughs> <laughs> these guys are off off the goop today <laughs> oh boy Ugh, man retro that joke was made like 10 minutes ago i don't know where you were at <laughs> oh Either way, incredible performance there in the split second timing. Sonic's had that on lock too. That was the thing. There was never even, from what I could tell, a major threat of DG getting into that site as they had the entire push from the inside of aviation very well contained. Didn't seem like there was much of a threat from 90. It was all based on contacts and they just never really found their capability to do it because as we got into those final seconds, Iconic went absolutely crazy and just swung out into the hallway to take full control of that situation, executing all three players that were trying to move in from that avenue. Beautiful stuff from him and a great hold from the rest of the Sonics too. Just got right into the face of that push from Aviation and didn't let it go anywhere. Yeah, when it comes to rookie players, I'll tell you right now, Iconic has the best shot out of all of them. I, I know for a fact that obviously NJR, J9, and a lot of these other rookies around the league uh, are very, very strong, especially in the fragging department. A lot of the people coming into the NAL having a lot of mechanical skill. But when it comes down to it, inside of game sense as well as trigger discipline and everything else in between, Iconic takes the cake. The guy can make things happen that you didn't even think were possible. I mean, that those kills inside of that, that very short instance by Iconic inside of Statuary is something that we're going to be talking about for quite some time. Definitely some great stuff from Iconic. Truly trying to work as hard as possible for that major slot. And they're getting closer and closer towards it. Three uncontested rounds so far from the Sonic. Zero for Disrupt here. Just four more stand between Sonics and a spot in the grand final. They're going to have to win at least three maps in a rematch versus Space Station Gaming. Who only have to win two on their own because they're coming in from the upper bracket. And it's a best of five. Sonics, of course, just setting themselves up, doing some final preparation as they fall back closer to the site. Well, in the meantime, Disrupt move in. And like I was talking about before, we could see this kind of weird vertical strat once again from the Disrupt camp, seeing as they've once more brought both the Buck and the Sledge. We'll have to see how Disrupt go about handling this now, as you said. But the, the main thing is, is I want to see how the Sonics try and adapt to this. The last time they had a really nice retake from China to kill the Diffuser uh, Planter, 
over on the pantry single panel. So we'll see if this is going to be more of the same or if Disrupt try and go for something a touch different. As for the Sonics camp, though, they are spread throughout this entire map. We have Iconic all the way downstairs, just worried about that basement play and a possible pantry push, as well as easily in tow down there. So lots of things going on for the Sonics. It's up to Disrupt to try and be proactive, especially in that intel game. And JR now goes hunting here. You'll note that Sonics have pretty much chosen to play it pretty much entirely offsite, at least with regards to Kitchen. In order to counter this backup, not only that, they've at least one player holding basement presence against what's more than likely going to be that same push into the pantry angle. Of course, you also have the other player who's just directly on the other side of this angle, ready to contest it in the event that Disrupt once again try to go for that same plan. It's easily sitting on the basement position, along with Iconic as well. It'll be ready to stab this push in the back in the event Disrupt try to go about it in a similar fashion they did in round number one. And they're going to have to set themselves up for it soon. We're coming down to the wire here as we enter the last 40 seconds. Yeah, and here's that big problem just being shown off by the Sonics. They have so many crossfires here, but it doesn't seem to matter for J9 as he cleans up super. But those long-distance gunfights on off angles that no one's really used to are going to continue to be problematic as Slebin finally fires back, gets that refrag that they desperately needed to bring us back to even man count. But he's even traded as he tries to work his way up Astronomy Stairs. But minimal time now, and this execute needs to happen easily. Already adjusting himself upstairs, but he's got priorities, and they're Set pretty damn straight he's on the case and not only the case but he's on the last member with the case at zero zero across the board and a nice rotation from easily to clean up another defensive round for the sonics like i said they were looking to stab that attack in the back and they do just that by taking the very position that disrupt needed in order to secure their plant and open up the plant opportunity to begin with great counter by the sonics yet again now they have their own little run of the gauntlet here similarly to what we were seeing from disrupt back on cafe defense it's sonics controlling every single round on the opener here in our third and final map of the series a 4-0 scoreline yet to be contested by disrupt and no signs of that changing anytime soon here disrupt now have to go up against the avg defense once more yeah, you said it. You said it straight up. I mean, every single one of these rounds controlled by the Sonics, but I don't even think it goes, you know, as short as that. It feels as though they are controlling every single facet of what Disrupt want to do. I mean, even inside that last round, John, it felt like the meme where the, the guy's holding the, the box of stuff and he goes, this is my stuff. And he sets it down and then the other guy picks it up and he goes, no, this is my stuff. That's what it felt like. He just rotates right up top, takes back the map control that Disrupt thought they had and they end up losing to their own vertical play. Some great stuff coming out from the Sonics, making sure that Disrupt sit on that fat old goose egg. You gotta respect the uh, trigger discipline in that situation too, not to actively chase down the Sledge who is still upstairs. If he does that, there's gonna be a much greater kind of hyper awareness from the other players that they have to watch out for that top down angle. And they might even try to plant in a different position than where they did. Instead, he keeps his kind of obscurity right there, doesn't take the fight, allows that Sledge to fully rotate. And then as the element of surprise when he's finally needed to deny that second plan attempt beautiful work right there by the sonics to make sure that they indeed control round number four going to give them that massive lead to build off of here we've got disrupt out on the board of course for their next attack against the avg defense we'll see how well it goes they've already taken some good first floor control and are actively working on pressuring slevin out of his current position on the main stairs well, the Sonic's going to have access to a Nitro Cell with Super up here. Slevin gets one, but the refrag not happening. Nitro Cell out does a lot of damage, and oh, what a big shutdown. But DG across the board, able to get two other kills. NJR making it even more difficult now as he picks up yet another one. And it's actually the Sonics on their back foot. This is something that's very unexpected, especially from how Disrupt has been playing. But this time, they're coming in with the heat. They're coming in with the sauce. They're trying to get these kills early on and often. Possibly prepared to try and move in here, hard breach out some of the defense that's been set up. Waiting, of course, for the MP to go off here. Retro will soon open up a crawl hole for his team to work with to get them to the inside of bar. Super's going to start to re-rotate. He knows that study control isn't fully under Disrupt's control just as of yet. So he tries to go towards the doorway. Little does he know though, that someone still has an angle onto that doorway. So he won't be able to work it as well as he thought to fall back iconic now watching some of these top down positions trying to make sure that none of the members of disrupt are looking to do anything sneaky the big note though is i'm pretty sure the hard breach no never mind i thought the hard breach got denied but 
That's not going to be the case. Reed still train on this angle. This is the swing, though. A player did work their way back out, and that's going to be big because Iconic also just found another kill. He's going to be able to fall back as well. Nitro goes out, super saves his teammate there with a quick pickup, although the Nitro cell would have probably done the job as well. And now everything's fallen down to Reed, who's just completely lost in that situation, walks into a crossfire. Iconic takes him down, and for a round that started out with questionable intentions from the Sonics, they once again are able to rebound and put the scoreline up at five to nothing. Oh no, this is this is just looking like a disrupt that's falling to pieces right now. Trophy stash were going to be the next site for the Sonics, but I really want to talk about what's happening with Disrupt currently. They bind for the map control very well. They trade out efficiently, able to get it down to the three versus three, and then get a pick on top of that. And we're now down into a two versus three in favor of Disrupt Gaming, which we've seen throughout all of today and all of stage two, that these guys are really good about being patient, utilizing those drones to get that intel, and then going through with their plan accordingly. This time around, that's not what happened, John. Right. It was the defense being proactive and most notably an amazing cross yeah. being held by Super and Iconic. I mean, if there's anyone that you want to hold down a, site, uh, a study like that, it's going to be these two. I mean, very quick adaptation to what was going on. They know they had two outside on the balcony as well as they had to worry about the study window. Super grabs bookshelf. You have Iconic who's got the hot hand right now. Pressure inside and actually works his way past the angle for those balcony players and is able to get a frag because of that. So many strong things happening right now for the Sonics. It's looking beautiful over on the orange side. Now, NJR is going to bring an interesting wrinkle into this one. Six picks into the glass. We talked a little bit about this operator yesterday, and I think we also saw him in the Disrupt game yesterday too, but... Important thing to note, Glaz was recently buffed almost to the levels that he was at before, where he was absolutely insane with his capability to spot players through smoke. You still have that dial that has to build up, but first of all, it builds up incredibly quickly now, and it goes down very slowly, even while moving at near full speed. It's very hard to go below three out of the four notches, meaning that that Glaz has a lot of freedom to frag, where before he had to remain almost stationary to have the same effect. Yeah, and that buff is going to have a large impact on how you have to play around those smokes. And right now, this could be, you know, the cloak and dagger needed by Disrupt to make something happen here. Those smokes go off. Everyone's been so used to being, you know, the Stewie 2K smoke criminal inside of those just existing. But that's not what's going to be the case here. If anyone steps up to the plate inside of those smokes, they're sure to catch a bullet from NJR. Iconic gonna set up a little bit of a hole with his deagle here just so that he can easily try to toss through the nitro cell a little bit later on in the round not only to try and deal some damage but possibly to deny the hard breach too about gonna be used early on here to open up access to the walk-in closet give them a better purview of what's going on deeper on the inside of master bathroom Iconic in the meanwhile is just on drone duty firing out against some of these players just a check see if anybody's in skylight but we rarely see that nowadays so definitely not gonna be happening there and they are trained on the door i'm pretty sure in the meantime here just to make sure nobody goes for a swing and he's correct about that so he can now move forward with the assistance of his drones and here you can get a good picture for what oh. i was talking about before he's gonna fall on the hatch that's gonna be unfortunate however i'm pretty sure it's a mistake which he can correct pretty quickly here over the next 15 seconds just by rappelling back up absolutely but the main thing for njr right now is he cannot fire that weapon until he is able to kill someone or at least deal some significant damage. That gun is one of the most pro, uh, most you know, known reports in all of the game. So right when he shoots, they know that there's going to be a glass on the field. So they have to utilize, again, that cloak and dagger in the proper way to have this round fall into their lap. He got some initial readings there. We saw the initial beginnings of that thermal scope working out. Saw some yellow working onto that split door. But again, it's back to the Sonics. Playing this perfectly right now. Disrupt, again, being very patient on offense. But this time, they have nothing to show for it perfect half so far here by the sonics and they're only 30 seconds away from completing that with a full six here self to hold back the overall push from disrupt gaming there was a potential run out being lined up there but there we go now the glass comes into the picture but it's very short-lived as it's immediately traded out despite that though trades are going to continue to roll out across the board bringing this down into a three versus three situation retro tries to swing it's a miracle he's not dead as gumpy killed his teammate instead now retro gets the trade down to a 2v1 super against the world with only eight seconds remaining he tries to get aggressive and finally is taken down as disrupt will get their one and only round on attack for this half as they finally take control. 
Oh, well, it was desperately needed. They're going to defense now. This is really, really telling of what we saw the last time. Disrupt was able to put five rounds together on their defense on Cafe. And when it came to the Sonic's defense, they weren't able to produce very much. Disrupt, I'm hoping this isn't the, you know, backstory of what happened to the previous map, but obviously flip flopped. The Sonics now on the offense up five rounds. They need two rounds to not only go to the best of five later on today up against SSG, but that will also mean that the Sonics have played in every single one of the series that we have today. Truly really a marathon effort if they are able to get to that point, but they still need those two final rounds in order to push them over the edge. Now jumping onto the attacking side, things will be a little bit different for them to work with here, but we're no stranger to their lineup, or at least for the most part here. Most notably, Super bringing the Lion in the check, and that's on top of the Ying play from Slevin here too. So we could expect a possibly very aggressive start here from the Sonics, especially if they're able to get their hard destruction done early on in the round, which they'll certainly try to do with this Habana being brought to the table. Let's find out though, over the next 10 seconds, see, making sure, of course, there's nothing crazy going on with the disrupt setup. Just a couple extra reinforcements going over to Aviation and Games. There's a little bit of extra security to the roaming team that's going to be working over here, but away from that, it's a fairly standard setup by the defenders. Yeah, I mean, that one seems to be OSHA approved. You know, everyone's got their hard hats on. Everything <laughs> seems fine. So, you know, good workspace for those roamers. But I think that the main thing to talk about right now, John, is that Sonics are now onto that offense. And if you remember from that SSG series earlier on, they put three rounds in a row up against the world champs, and they looked so good doing it. There was so many things inside of those rounds right there that we saw Sonics not only adapt, but just be very strong overall on their offense offenses here for Villa. This is really, really worrying when it comes to disrupt. So we'll see if these you know, new strategies that they're bringing to the table work out for them. They've dedicated a lot of utility over to this planes and games area. And you can already see the Sonics. The cogs are moving inside of their brain. They don't want to deal with it at all. They're immediately going over to Master. Yeah, quick audible getting called after they realize that not only is their Goyo shields present over on the inside of aviation, but an ADS, at least one at a minimum, in position here so they are going to just avoid that work their way over to the kitchen clear and i believe some master action will be showing up here in a moment as well and just commit themselves to trying to take master walk in control on top of more than likely getting aster's stairs too that'll be a one to two man job though with a bigger emphasis by far being on the master bedroom take itself so take a look here iconic already moving himself through gomfy able to find out the position of one of the Goyo shields sitting up on top and deals with that through one of the breaching charges. I mean, Iconic are probably going to take a moment here, though, as they pause to make sure no roamers try to counteract that pressure and trade against them. Iconic going to be first to fall here, though, as he is found out by NJR, working his way up the pantry stairs. A nice find indeed, and it does quite a bit of damage to this push. Gomfi also gets caught down here as well with a good top-down angle from Retro. Beautiful counters here by Disrupt. Definitely putting a stun overall in the push from the Sonics, as now the remaining three have no secondary angle to work off of. They're all stuck in Master. Great adaptation here from Disrupt. They don't try and deal with the Rome game, so the Rome game comes to them, and it pays off so well. Retro with yet another one. Double kill for him on the round. As he's keeping things locked down inside of Astronomy, hey, easily put your face in that one, and it's going to get removed. It's down to the one versus five for Super, as he's trying to make something work here inside of Master. Don't see him getting too far, though. EE1D gets set off, but all of Disrupt just going to stand still. They know exactly where this man is. Is, and with minimal time left on the clock, only having case control and no real way to plant, it's mostly just going to be a timeout here for the Sonics. So, going to be 5-2 in favor of Disrupt. The Sonics just not able to get this master take to work. It just seemed like it was a little too slow to actually get to the initial upswing. DG, just a little bit quicker to the punch. A lot of hesitance more than anything. That's <laughs> super. That's some nice commentary at the end. A lot of hesitance, I think, more than anything coming in from the Sonic camp there, especially with regards to the downstairs clear. They were being very, very careful so as not to get tripped up by a roaming presence, only to have that very thing happen on top of, of course, the great hold from Retro up on top. 
but that top down angle to kill Gomfi later on in the round as well. Certainly not what they wanted to have happen down there. And that was already after they had called an additional audible earlier in the round to avoid the pressure that was happening on the inside of aviation. So Sonics were really, you know, kind of lost in that round, trying to find a good point to initiate and, and never really could just pick it up. So they had to try and force the issue with the three players they had left inside of the bathroom, you know, just committed all three of the Candelas, just said, screw it, let's try and go for it. And it immediately failed. So ends up being a pretty convincing win for Disrupt as they now shift downstairs into the kitchen hole. Well, the good news is for the Sonics is that with this beautiful lead that they have conjured up from their defensive half, they have a lot of time to figure out how Disrupt plays this. Even if Disrupt gets three rounds in a row, that's only going to put them up to four. And then the Sonics still have attempts to go back and get other cracks at the site with already knowing how Disrupt sets things up. So... For, you know, all intents and purposes, this is really, really good for the Sonics still. We need to see Disrupt just be convincingly dominant throughout this defensive half. Otherwise, the Sonics are in good standing. Yeah, no matter what happens here, this is a tough comeback for Disrupt, even if they start really running the gauntlet here and picking up, you know, convincing win after win after mm -hmm. win. They still have to battle back from this massive deficit that the Sonics can ultimately outdistance them from very little effort just by winning one or if they want to outright win the series just those two extra rounds so they sort of have to be very careful here it's a convincing start now don't get me wrong first round they win looks incredibly good and incredibly promising for that comeback to happen but beginning of a very very long long road for them but they would be the team to do it they're the team that's had to play less today they did not have to run through that other series that the sonics already had to place so they're a little bit fresher and hopefully a little bit more able to spend off some of these attacks from the Sonics if they want to run this comeback and get ready for the marathon of a series that's going to be coming up after this. Yeah, if the Sonics are able to win this, they've already, technically speaking, played a best of five today. This is map five for the Sonics so far, and they're going to be walking into a best of five with SSG up a map. So they would have to win three maps there just to win this series and be qualified for the major. So still a lot of pressure on the shoulders of the Sonics, but still well within their right and lead here to try and win out Villa. We're about halfway through the round now, but not too much action has happened just yet, folks. The defense for Disrupt looking quite strong, but it's very, very similar in contrast to what the Sonics were doing here as well. They're going to be worried about that living room area. We'll see if they try and go about things in similar fashion when it comes to the execute. Also, very notable, IQ along for the ride for the very first time today. An operator we talked about before about how she has been forced out of the meta quite a bit just because her utility isn't as useful anymore for quite a few situations but because we're seeing so much valve play it can explain why the sonics might want to bring it back in just to try and avoid getting spotted out especially in any sort of chaotic situations here a nice find from easily as now some progress is being made he's able to ex kairos open one of the walls on the inside of laundry that gives them their first entry. Second one's not going to be too much further behind either as Iconic is able to isolate down Shuttle. Reed with a beautiful flick on the Slevin, but it's just as quickly traded back out. Easily going huge right now as he's up to three with that most recent kill. J9, he tries to catch the drop down from Gomphy, but fails to do so. And the Sonics take one out of the two rounds they need to finish out this series. And that's exactly what I was worried about there, John. If somebody's able to get into sight and make some magic happen, they're more than likely going to be able to pick up a round strictly based off of the premises of what happened, right? And that's exactly what happened. Easily walks in right through laundry, able to get two very impactful kills right off rip. You know, nips the last one right in the bud, little icing on the cake for that triple kill. And all of a sudden, the Sonics on map and match point. This is for all of the marbles. They can send DG home right now now everything that dg has done up until this point all of the vod review last night sitting around with evil waffle trying to make things fire on these cylinders that were necessary to beat the sonics all down to these last four rounds can they do it the six pick coming in we're gonna see the alibi for the first time today is this going to be the game changer here for disrupt i don't think it will be the thing that's the most scary walking into these rounds especially up against how the sonics play offense is their utilization of those ee1ds they have done such a good job and i would go as far as to say they're the best at using lion right now in the entire game they're really the only team that i've seen utilize 
utilize him so often and to such a high level. And it's kind of interesting because it almost seems like it's been forced on them to a certain degree when you look at how much Nomad was being played as of a few weeks ago. Then people started target banning the Nomad because it was used so much by the Sonics, it forced them into using Lion more. And ever since those bans started to become a thing, I've noticed more and more Lion play from the Sonics, even when Nomad isn't banned out. So it's slowly been kind of working its way into their overall strategy here, but I like it. It's been working out pretty well for them, as you already mentioned. Yeah, I think that the main thing is, is how they can capitalize off that with their entry fraggers. I mean, we saw it inside of the last round. EU1D goes off and immediately Iconic has somebody inside of his sights. So they're doing a really good job of using the drones for the initial recon and then using those EE1Ds to capitalize on the intel that they've already gotten. It's just overall such a good work from here, uh, here from the Sonics. So... Sonics needing one round here. Disrupt back to AVG. We already talked about that six pick over to the Alibi. They're going to be playing that turtle setup, leaning on this utility to try and slow down the Sonics. But that hasn't been working out too well for them. The Sonics very opt to get in the faces of these members, very opt to try and use their utility against them. A hell of a frag grenade coming out to remove J9 from play. It's been a big theme all day has been how successful some of these frag grenades have been. And that one's actually kind of interesting that it even went off i'm assuming it, it, it had to have come from the repel window but they did have ads's in the doorway so i'm wondering why it didn't get eaten up by the ads there is it must have gone i guess too far for the side of the hallway for it to actually get caught it may have been out of range from the ads which will be very unfortunate if so because that absolutely should have been able to stop it iconic gonna go see if he can go two for two on the nades here and yes he can even getting some bullet damage onto him there too goodbye to njr as iconic makes full use of those nades to put his team ahead in a very big way here now down to a 5v3 after that one you got to call him by his real name that's lebronic right there from the key two frag grenades pour in get two huge kills that are needed for sonics to seal this series and seal the fate of disrupt gaming retro and the rest of the squad still have a chance here nitro cell on shuttle but now they know exactly where retro is he's locked down on the main staircase but a good read here as shuttle pushes in through the plane's door can he go for two he can he shuts down easily all oh, the weight of the world on his shoulders and he's able to make it happen he equalizes here sonics now have to battle off their back foot more importantly that's a retake onto the inside of study here too taking away the control of the sonics that just fought so hard to get for themselves here down to a 30 second timer for the sonics to make this work they still have it into a 3v3 to minimum but they no longer really have that right to initiate oh. they had before reed with a great top down finds out comfy eliminates him swings into the hallway to get a second one now everything falls to slevin in the 1v3 it looks like this game might go on for a little bit further but slevin he's not ready to give up just yet he'll battle through the smoke charge Still trying to win out this 1v2 here. Has the lineup for the first kill. Now can he get the second? He might not immediately get the opportunity to do so, but he's going for the plant. Shuttle's just waiting this one out. Now tries to wrap around. We're at post-timer. All he's going to do is get the kill, and he will get it, saving this map. Disrupt, they're still in the fight as they take round number nine. Oh my goodness gracious. Shuttle! When he's needed most, the bat signal goes up and he springs to action right inside a study, takes down every person that he can possibly see. And to think, we were talking so much crap a couple weeks ago about how all this guy's been using on Buck is a red dot. He's applied it to every other gun that he now has inside of his arsenal, John, and he is just murdering everyone. This is a shuttle that we need to see, especially right now. They need three more rounds in a row to make this happen, and these rounds are neck and neck the sonics now have another chance to try and send dg home this time around is going to be trophy instead we'll have three more to do it including this one so the pressure is on the comeback train has started but will it arrive at the station in time for closing that's the tough part here the sonics still looked very very good on that attack up until the bitter end even coming down to the clutch nearly made it work remember that was a 1v3 they got brought down to a one versus one so still even in a bad spot the sonics nearly coming out on top and that's not even talking as well about the earlier play from iconic where they were able to lock down two separate players and take them both out with just ace grenades from him a lot to be feared right now in the sonics camp and disrupt have to put respect on that Yes, they do indeed. Lots of utility being brought from the defense, as you would expect. We're going to have three shields here for DG, as Retro's going to be bringing one along with him. 
ADSs for read and then some denial along the way as well as some information. So Disrupt with an overall nice setup here, at least in the utility department. This is going to be very strikingly similar to what they uh, provided here the last time on Trophy. But the problem being the last time they were on Trophy stat, we actually ended up, I take my words back, flawless round for DG. Apologies there on the memory. It's been kind of a long day already, but DG having a flawless round the last time that we saw them here. So let's see if they can do it again. Sonics with some early pressure that's going to be working its way to the inside of aviation. Now, back in the previous round, they ignored this. They tried their best to work their way around it, but ultimately that served into a failing of their strategy once we got into a late round situation. Shuttle is still going to maintain this position on the inside of it, despite losing the Goyo shield. Reed will also be right around the corner, but they're going to have to be careful. They will lose part of the hard brief that they had set up behind them there. Sonic Server will successfully work their way through it, but the actual push attempt happens over by the hallway door, where Reed is very much ready for the swing from Gompi. There's Iconic once again, but this time NJR is ready for a response. He takes down Iconic just as quickly as he picked up the frag and allows for Disrupt to still maintain an advantage here. Shuttle... More than likely going to be next up to the plate with possibly some assistance coming in from Reed. Oh no, they don't even consider that Shuttle could be in study right now. He gets oh! an easy double, shutting out both easily and super. And now everything's on to Slebin. 10-0-4 right now. Slebin lost for words. One versus four, trying to get case control back. But I will say this, lots of time on the board and Slebin does not exactly miss. Has a G8 in his hands. It is indeed doable. I know it seems like a very, very... Long, long shot here for Slevin, but it is definitely still a possibility. And that's exactly why DG is going to scamper on back to site. Still has to worry about one inside of planes and games. Takes down Reed, but Reed delivers as much as he receives. Slevin down to a single sliver of HP. Any gun in the game takes him down. If this is going to be the clutch moment that wins the Sonics a game, this is going to be one of the best clutches I've ever seen in my entire life. Slebin now working his way in towards Boar, but he has a lot more to worry about than just that. Still has benches to worry about, still has a lot of these positions from Disrupt to worry about, most notably Concrete being held for that cross. Still has Banshees inside of sight as well, which could give away his position, but more, more than likely getting heard by NJR right now. J9 steps up to the plate and he rips Slebin. Disrupt stay in this one. Unfortunately, even away from the Banshee, Footsteps had already given away his position via sound cues. J9-0 with a nice lineup to put a swift end to that round. Great aggressive pressure from the Disrupt roster to keep up with some of Sonic's own aggressive pressure at the beginning of the round, make sure that they stay in control. Despite losing some of their utility over towards Aviation, they're able to trade it out into their favor and maintain for one of the three rounds that they need to pick up. Only two more opportunities for the Sonics to close this down before we go to overtime, and the Disrupt roster completes an absolutely insane comeback from a 1-5 to five deficit. We'll have to see if it happens. Six pick coming in really late there from the DG camp. We're getting rid of Alibi. We're grabbing Pulse. Nice read here from Reed. Uh, so we'll see if Disrupt can make some good work with that. But the big problem is right now, DG not seemingly having a living room hold. I expected them to try and, you know, shake some things up. But they're actually going to be going back to Kitchen, which if you guys remember, this is where Easily simply walked in through Laundry and got that triple kill. So it seems as so they're going to adjust some utility around to make it a little bit more difficult for that to happen. Banshee now applied to that door, but you know, it still stays within the same realm. The Sonics know how to attack this and they know how to attack it with very, very, you know, convincing fashion. So for Disrupt, it's going to be what can you possibly create in this early game to slow down the Sonics and make this execute difficult for them? Well, let's see what that is going to be. The timer has started. The Sonics are out on the board looking to claim victory yet again, although that's been a problem over these last two rounds as they've tried so desperately to seal the deal. They've been unable to do so despite some promising starts, especially on the round two back. We're going to see quite a few members of the Sonics work their way in. Same as before, from the study side, Drone is going to be very heavily emphasized this early on in the round, as you guys would kind of come to expect. Iconic is also getting a good amount of intel about what's going on in the Astro Stair area in the meantime, and should be able to investigate around here, more than likely spotting out J9's position, and also more than likely at least hearing NJR. We're going to see the Goyo Shield that was supporting NJR from the inside of Walken get dealt with first here. 
where we start to see some more pressure broil in from the aviation players. They're not working against anything this time, thankfully. They don't have to deal with the immediate counter pressure. They can swing out to top red, and Slevin's actually going to move himself down the stairs a little bit. I'm not sure if he got intel on a shuttle's position or not, but either way, rejoins his teammate and refocuses on trying to take out J9. Both of these teams trying to figure out exactly where they can try and make a move. J9 now jumping downstairs, but that'll be read by the offense. EE1D catching him off guard. Inside of that animation, can't prevent himself from moving, so now they know that the top floor has been given up. This was an adjustment by Disrupt as well. They knew Sonics wanted this top floor control, so instead of trying to hold on to living room for their entire lives, they choose to adjust some things upstairs and slow down this offense, and it's working out quite well for them so far. Reed's been able to read into a lot of things going on on the offense once again but the problem is is that they really haven't been able to confirm any of this intel with those nitro cells usually when we see a lot of nitro cells like this partnered with that uh, you know cardiac sensor we see a lot more of these being confirmed and just a larger amount of pressure applied to those top floor players reed going to eat a nitro cell or excuse me a frag grenade nitro cell goes off but doesn't deal any damage slevin gets taken down by j9 on a nice rotate and this is still wide open for both of these squads consistency with which these frag grenades are hitting disrupt members is absolutely insane it's some great stuff coming in from iconic there easily he's going to be able to pick up the first kill for his team on this round however as he finds Finds J9 down to the final 35 seconds, and we're still not really close to Sonic's execute just yet. Disrupt with a lot of control close to the site. Reed getting incredibly aggressive at the laundry door. Takes down easily, drops the kit with it, and brings us into a four versus three scenario for the last 20 seconds. The Sonics have to make a move now, but from the looks of it, Disrupt are ready to read every single one of those moves. Retro nearly gets found out here, but elsewhere on the map, NJR takes down Gomfi. Retro with the shot, he starts to clean things up, and Reed will finish off the job. That's one more round that Disrupt need to tie this up. And this will go to a fully loaded series in overtime to settle our winner. And more importantly, who gets to move on to face off against Space Station Gaming in the best of five? Oh, the Sonics have to be sweating bullets right now. Disrupt one round away from overtime. And John, it's not because they're doing anything out of the ordinary. They're just making plays when the plays come to them. We've seen Disrupt time and time again so far on this defensive half be able to adjust into these very niche areas where we don't really see defenders sit. And they're catching the Sonics off guard quite often and it's presenting a lot of issues. The Sonics just not having the man count needed or the players are around each other for those refrags and disrupt is making really really good work of that avg is going to be the last site held in sight of regulation for disrupt gaming they're back on the alibi can they do it can they run four rounds in a row to bring us to overtime and force the Sonics into, into a hell of a predicament. Not only is Disrupt back on the Alibi, but the Sonics have also brought the Ying back in in place of their Sledge. Iconic is going to be taking up the mantle there. Also bring some smokes into the mix here as well. Something that Sonics, I'm sure, has been wanting to use quite well, but it really hasn't been able to due to the operator choices that have been played up until this point. Usual setup going to be deployed over here by the main stairs, by the Disrupt roster. Everything is looking very similar to what we have already seen here from the Disrupt camp, and it's going to include one of the alibis going down onto the main stairs that Njera will now have to play around along with his three ADSs, all of which have been committed here. So a lot of emphasis going on to that stairwell that will, however, remove the relative immunity that things like the Goyo shields and other pieces of utility will get for the first couple bits of utility because they're not being used on the site. Well, you can't blame them. From the Villa game that we saw the Sonics play, a lot of their offense was centralized around rushing up the main stairs and fragging out the two players that play around that area. We've seen them handle it in different ways before. We've also seen some pressure coming from Study, you know, unbeknownst to those, you know, top floor players, some smokes going off and all of a sudden someone dies from some pressure that you weren't exactly expecting. But there are some other things that we need to talk about. Ayana's now in play and this is going to be a big change up here, strictly because of her hot hologram there's going to be multiple areas in which they can use this hologram to get really good intel as well as that means that slevin is going to have this most of the time every single time that it's shot it obviously gets set to cooldown but he has these infinitely if it's off cooldown he can use it and that's just more intel for this offense still bringing frag grenades to the table too and that will be played by slevin here it looked like he was priming one earlier but kind of reeled back on that a little bit now due to 
We've seen transpire over at the main stairs. J9 gets the angle, and he is able to down a player. In fact, no, that's Shuttle. Excuse me. That's able to find the initial pick onto Iconic. That's a big player gone down. None of the Candelas have been used, so a complete waste of the utility. That's on top of the smokes as well. A big pick from Disrupt to get this round started off. Yeah, especially onto Iconic, like you were saying. All that utility gone, but also the top frag for the Sonics gone. So he's going to be sitting on the bench for the rest of this one. It's up to the remaining Sonics members to win this out inside of regulation. Let's see if they can make it happen. Gonfi and Slebin, as well as easily working their way up to the top of main stairs, but Reed making things even more difficult now as he takes down Slebin. Gomfi still trying to clear out the player on 90. That's NJR. It's going to continue to cause delays here as we enter the last minute of the round. Members of Disrupt still at a full five-man roster here against only three still standing from the Sonics. A lot of the heavy lifting going to need to be done here by the remaining three players as they don't have those big fraggers that have been prevalent in the other rounds like Iconic and Slebin here trying to push forward. Nice support from Gomfi. Nearly loses easily to the player that's deeper in sight, but regardless, a kill from Gomfi onto the player on 90 is able to save easily as well as put them a little bit further ahead here. But they're taking more time to fall back and reposition themselves. They're running out of all this safety time down to the final 20 seconds. Now the execute needs to begin. Shuttle takes up the position of NJR and finds the trade onto Gomfi, bringing it down to only two. He already expects the player to walk up red stairs, but no, Super will win the fight anyway. 10 seconds on the clock. They're going to try to swing in. Super will move forward, tries to take the winning position in the fight, but can't make it happen. Easily has to do it instead, but no, J90 takes him down and disrupt will trigger ot on map number three. Oh my didn't expect to see this one coming after how this map started but dg battle back on the defensive side the sonics have no chance and now we're headed to overtime the sonics on to defense this is their strongest side here for actually both of these teams so dg need to clean up these offenses they were only able to get one singular round on their offense and that was up against the statuary defense so the sonics going to be avoiding that one like the plague i can tell you that one for sure avg will be our first sight here for the sonics and right back into it here now as the sonics will have an opportunity to defend and hopefully try to pick up another round here remember folks we are not in the best of five yet so unlimited ot is not a thing and i actually don't think it'll be a thing in that series anyway but it's first to eight within this series that'll decide who moves forward and into that grand final matchup to decide who is moving onward into the major itself Locked and loaded here. A very, very impressive comeback from Disrupt, given the pressure that was mounted against them. Needed to run five out of six of the rounds, and they do just that, only allowing the Sonics to escape with a single win on their attacking side. That's going to put a lot of confidence into the Sonics, more than likely, since the defenses have been controlling everything. They have the inherent advantage and that they'll get to play two defensive rounds compared to their opponents, but we'll see if that's going to be enough to make up the difference. Even if Disrupt end up losing the series right here, this is probably the best series that I've seen them play. And, well, since the beginning of Disrupt, I'll be honest with you, th this team is looking really, really good right now. They're firing on all cylinders. I know we say that all the time, but most notably, NJR and Shuttle showing up in huge, huge fashion today. Let alone away from that, J9 showing up, f just murdering everyone, as well as Retro and Reed. This entire team is just looking so damn good right now, and they are taking it to the Sonics. No one expected them to run it up on that defensive side, especially with how the Sonics were handling their offenses up against Space Station Gaming. We're now into overtime and disrupt. Now have to make things happen on this offense. We'll see if they can possibly have some impact here with this Jackal. They're worried about the roam game of the Sonics, and they damn well should be. The Sonics have been able to make a lot of good work, especially with Iconic on that roam game. He's got the most frags, I do believe, right now inside of the lobby, all except for Shuttle. Shuttle's really stepped up, especially as of the second half of regulation there. Let's see if he'll be able to carry over the same effort on the attacking side. Iconic's certainly looking for some impact that he could try to make here against the DG push. Most of them moving over towards the top red area and 90. A few of them still outside of that connector window, so we can expect them to hop in in a moment. But Iconic is slowly creeping up on this push. He can hear the sledge work being done above him. Doesn't know exactly where it's happening just yet, but... More than anything, just trying to be aware of that situation right now. It's only a single hit from Shuttle anyway. He quickly falls back and looks like he's going to head over towards Study to regroup with the rest of the team. 
Iconic, I think, has taken note of this and is also on his way back closer to the site, given that we're getting close to zero timer here with a little under half the round remaining. This is when things get difficult for both sides here because of things like that. You got to make sure to check every single box before you attempt to do anything. Anything could lead to your death. And when it comes to Siege, you don't know where it could possibly be coming from. Nitro Cell goes off under J9's feet, knocks him to half health here on bus door, but still keeps him alive. All of these Sonic's members ready and lying in wait for this vault plant to be attempted. Smoke grenades out, Nitro Cell in, but it's going to fall on deaf ears. Iconic now up to the plate. Can he make this red push happen? It works out for him. Can he go for more than that? NJR gets the plant down. They try for the vault, but he's not even there. And NJR gets out with his life, but it's quickly taken back by the Sonics. DG all over the board. Easily has been downed. It's all left up to Gomfi, and he's wide spraying everywhere. He can possibly pick up easily here, and he'll do exactly that. Mute Jammer next to Retro. Not a Banshee. They don't know exactly where he is. He gets one, and he gets two. Retro for Disrupt on the off. Offense shut down the Sonics when they needed to most. They're walking into the defense looking tall. What a run. It was four rounds in a row regulation. Now it's gone up to five rounds in a row here from the Disrupt roster. And the most important thing to note is they just won one of their two attacking rounds. We talked before about how during regulation, a majority of the rounds were won on defense. Them winning the attacking round is a massive deal because now same the principle applies what I was talking about before, but now in the opposite, all Disrupt need to do is follow through with what they were doing in regulation, shut down a single defensive round here in overtime and they have the series they have the golden ticket to the qualifier finals against ssg well time to make jesse proud guys because trophy and statuary is the site in which dg has not lost just yet statistically and they also have a flawless round on it in their first attempt so this is going to be the most Attacking difficult site for the sonics to try and attack into they haven't been able to crack this nut at all they haven't even gotten a plant attempt or anything when it comes to this setup so dg feeling really really strong about this one it's now all down to the sonics is this all for naught? Is this entire Sunday that you planned for, that you slept for, that you need to win to go up against the, uh, the SSG members and walk into that best of five to not only finish out this series, but still go play some more damn Siege? That's what is on the plate right now for the Sonics. This is every attempt, every inkling of hope that they had to make this major inside of this round. They need everything to work for them right now. Let's see how it goes. All right, folks, what's well, coming down to the wire, like Stokes had mentioned, we're back on the trophy defense, a site that Disrupt has had a great record on going back to regulation. We have the similar roam setup for Disrupt as well, giving a lot of presence to Shuttle and Reed as they'll be doubling down by reinforcing these walls on top of having the Goyo for or Goyo Shield, excuse me, go over onto the study doorway. Now, the X Kairos are going to be used very quickly onto one of the bar walls that's going to open up better presence, allow for a bit of crossfire to go into the site in the event someone wants to try and hide behind bar. This should give them good 90 access. They'll still be in a little bit of trouble if they try to swing onto Reed from 90, but at the minimum, he won't have the absolute safety of the bar to play behind anymore. They'll spot his position. They know he's going to be sitting behind the gambling table. Shuttle will take some heat in the meanwhile from inside of gun vault too he's gonna go down to just over 50 hp take some shots but that's gonna let one of his opponents go past him and he probably hasn't realized that yet this is quickly turning into too hot of a situation to handle and indeed slevin will prioritize eliminating reed from that shuttle still alive but not for long the roam game has been torn to shreds and iconic has found another pick from a grenade as he's down retro now there's still a chance for shuttle to get revived if njr wants to take a risk here but I would say there's a very low chance he wants that considering the swing's about to roll up from around the corner. Gomfi finishes off shuttle. NJR unscathed, but not for long as Slevin's now got his second kill on the round. J90 is all that's left and it may not stay that way for very long here. He's going to try to get aggressive onto the repel. Kills that player, yes, but the entire rest of the Sonic's roster is quickly on its way into the site. J9 does still have a Nitro Cell in his pocket. If he can play these angles properly, he might be able to stop the plant. Super just starting things up, but Slevin's got him on the cross. Beautifully done here by the Sonics. Both of these offensive units doubling down on lethality and just getting in the faces of these defenders. Looking so damn good walking through round 14. On to round 15, folks. The penultimate round in between these two teams. Which one of them will go on to face the SSG members later on this day. Space Station Gaming 
lying in wait, waiting for one of these teams to beat out the other. For the Sonics, it's already been a hell of a day. They have already played through five full maps and they possibly have a best of five ahead of them. It's all down to this last round. AVG is going to be the defense for the Sonics as they six pick away from the Malusi and pick up the smoke. An interesting change up considering the play styles that have been used leading up to this point. I'll note that Iconic has swapped over to the Valkyrie in the meanwhile, so the play still lines up with the roles of these members of the team. They've gone back into the aviation and games defense. I mean, very, very close to the previous attempt, but overall still being a success for Disrupt in the 1v2 clutch. Now Sonic's thinking they can turn the tides yet again and win this out on a final defensive round. We'll see if that holds true with the re-addition of a smoke to try and delay the overall push from Disrupt. Besides that, though, it is going to be very much the same formula. A lot of emphasis from Slevin put onto that main stairs, trying to hold it away from his opponents. Now, I'm very curious to see if he's going to commit as much utility this time that he did before when you consider just how quickly this rep was able to work their way past that. And right now, I'm only seeing one ADS, so it looks like he might have decided to put some of that utility a little bit closer to the site based on what I'm able to discern right now. And yeah, that looks accurate. Yes, indeed. Not the worst thing in the world to do either. As you were saying, they quickly got rid of all of those ADSs on top of the main stairs. So putting those back into sight so that Disrupt has to deal with that clear, probably going to help them out a lot. We'll say this before we get into the action side of this. It's been an absolute blast casting this series so far, guys. And I just want to make sure you guys look at these score lines on both sides. Look at these KDAs that these players have right now. Both of these teams are giving you their absolute best today. Disrupt looking elite compared to what they were at the beginning of stage two. This is just some masterclass work by both of these squads. Let's get into it. NJR already up to the top of Red Stairs. DG favoring the master clear once again. But as we saw, the Sonics already planning for it. ADS adjustments as well as a hell, hell of a lot of nitro cells and denial sitting inside of sight. Planning to do a lot of play from the inside of bar here, as we can see inside of games, wanting to capitalize on that. They've got a lot of nitro cells and just general delay capability that they can use from the inside. As long as they maintain 90 control and bookcase control, they won't have to worry about a whole lot coming from the other direction and can focus almost entirely on this top red push into the inside of bus door. Cuddle, ready to try and move in. He's got a frag grenade prime. This is going to be to take out the Goyo shield in the corner. Oh! The nade rolls out, but easily swipes the head right off a shuttle as the trade. The Sonics will be more than okay with that as they've now brought it down to a 5v4 at pretty much zero risk to any of their own players. Practically a reaction test there for easily, but he passes with flying colors and oh no, DG now starting to fall apart at the seam. Some damage onto J9 as he takes up the same angle, but oh my, the intelligence here from Sonics. Good Valkyrie camera placement on boss and no one's going to check that. They'll have a read on when this execute goes off at any moment in time. We can see these cheekily being placed around the entire area. Another one above Gomfi to read into the plane's room as well. Smoke grenades now start from easily as the Sonics have an entire lock on this site. DG have to try and fight through, but the main issue now, no study can Control. This is going to be tried and tried by Retro here as he mo uh, moves in from the main door. Still has to worry about Slevin, but Slevin having to worry about two. Lots of damage coming in, but now they have top red control. It is possible, especially when Reed picks up Iconic. He fights his way in, but it's the mute as well as Super to take him down. NJR battles back. It's a two versus two, but J9 fights in, and J9 wins the round. Disrupt. Send the Sonics home. What a better way to settle it as well than with the rookie stepping up to the plate. A former sub for the Sonics themselves now beats them out for a spot at the major. It's going to be Disrupt moving forward. They're not there just yet, folks. They still have one more opponent, and it's a tough one to beat. They still have to go up against Space Station Gaming, who will already start the series out with a 1-0 advantage against them. But it'll be a fully loaded best of five series, and you guys do not want to miss it. That's going to be coming up right after the conclusion of this series. Obviously, we'll give the players a little bit of a break, too. But right around the corner, guys, we have got a heck of a matchup for you, especially when you consider that looking earlier on in the stage, Disrupt was a real contender to actually beat out Space Station in a match that we had during the regular season. Any final thoughts here, Stokes, before we send it back? You need to send it on. Let's get into this best of five. I'm excited for it. You're excited for it. Let's get on to the analyst. Desk. All right. So let's send it back over to Veli and the boys to break down this absolutely incredible matchup. 
Oh my god, welcome back to the analyst desk. I'm Belly your desk because I'm joined by Jacob and Jesse J squared. Listen, <laughs> this game was absolutely insane. I I thought the Sonics they had it all. They had the biggest lead you could ever imagine. And this from gaming, they clawed their way back, the cardiac kids, as you will, and they came back, got the win, and solidified their spot in the finals against Space Station Gaming. And Disrupt, they have a chance to be a part of the NA Major for the first time this season. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, Jacob. Take it away, man. That, that was a crazy match. <laughs> I can tell that you're having a hard time breathing, and I am too. This didn't go the way I thought. There's, there's a chant in pro wrestling that goes, Fight forever! And that's exactly what we do over and over again. Every time Disrupt and SQ get in the same lobby at the same time, it keeps going to the wire. Whether you like it or not, they can literally <laughs> go toe to toe, blow for blow for a full three hours. And we have to do this every time we see these guys play. This is the craziest match that we've seen so far in the qualifier. I didn't think last day or yesterday's final match could be beat, but gosh, this was crazy. Uh, what, a, what a good match. I say that for now on in the NA League, we just have Sonics against Disrupt over and over and over again. <laughs> Please. So we can yep. go to the last yep. map, to the last round every single time. This has been just outright crazy. Jesse, you know, you gave me a few questions you wanted to talk <laughs> about here on the desk. And you know yeah. what? Let's, let's throw them all out the window right now. We have to show respect to an absolute god in that lobby. The guy put a lot of those rounds on his back, especially with the help of his teammates. But Shuttle, Shuttle was yeah. so great, Jesse. What did you like about him? Shuttle started this comeback. You know, when we had the defensive ha uh, half for Disrupt Gaming, they needed to do something. They needed to really kickstart these rounds to get this momentum going. And it was Shuttle who got aggressive on this defense. He managed to make those plays, downing the diffuser, having insane roams, and wasn't able to be tackled. Sometimes he died, sure, but he got two or three kills before that happened, and he really picked up the team. What he did was he ensured that Sonics never felt comfortable in those opening engagements. They didn't get the opening pick. They didn't get their foothold, and that's all because of Shuttle. I was really impressed with the way that Shuttle held things down, and to start up that comeback from Disrupt Gaming, that was super nice to see. Uh, and that's just, I mean, it's going to be overshadowed by that final round, probably, but I think Shuttle deserves a ton of credit in that match. The, the whole team deserves a ton of credit. They Everybody do. popped they off, do. man. Reed, NJR making crazy plays. Like, I, I'm going to need to calm down just a little bit. But, <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, you had a question that had to do with if Sonics won. But I'm thinking that you might switch it around. And you wanted to tell me and the viewers and educators about the truth, the secret about Villa and Sonics. I mean, we, I thought it was a pretty decent trend, and I was I, I was all ready to be like, the first time we had Villa as a decider in the NAL. When the Sonics had Villa as their third map, they beat Mirage on it in yes. the last qualifier. They beat Disrupt on it in the NAL Stage 2 only a couple of weeks. <laughs> All right, Jesse, shout out to you and Cat Jam. And Jesse, why you got the cat in your hands? Yeah. Disrupt, they're on the way to the finals. They have a chance to win now and make it, like I said earlier on. So this team against Space Station, what do you want to see more of for them to pop off to solidify that spot? They're one step closer. Just keep that momentum rolling, you know? I think that uh, the Space Station is probably going to be a tougher game. One sec. Probably going to be a tougher game than the Sonics. <laughs> and this one came close. But if they can keep their confidence up, they can keep fragging. Jane, I know, keeps going off. NJR, Shuttle, the players that we know that can frag on Disrupt Gaming. If they keep that rolling, they can win this matchup. And I think everybody in this matchup is going to be saying that Space Station are the better team. Space Station should win this. But crazier things have happened, and this, there's no better storyline that could lead into this matchup for Disrupt than what we just saw. It, it's possible, Veli. It's possible. To be, com to be completely fair, Jesse, let's be honest. Space Station, they haven't, as we say, steamrolled through the bottom four teams in the NAL yep. <laughs> yet this season. If, if I forgot a game or two, I forgot. But they've had some really close games, especially against E United, that sure. DG bested and put them down in the seventh place spot. So... This matchup is going to be exciting. Jacob, I heard from production that the chat probably didn't hear you. Is your mic working now? 
I was an idiot. There's a little red button that I'm not supposed to hit on OBS every time we go live for this, and I did because I didn't want everyone to hear how loud I was being while we were, we were, we were watching the game. It was so tight. It was so contested. That, that was such That's a my bad. hype segment. That's Jacob. my bad. I, I Jacob, know. No, I Jacob, know. I'm going to give you the chance. To be, let me put I'm the, the new guy. Again. Just go ahead and crucify me. And let right. it get, let's just get it over with fast, Jacob, man. That's I all liked I it. I liked it. We're going to do this, and we're going to have the players <laughs> have a break before the finals, but check this out. Let me ask hmm. you again, all right? So, for those of you that are just tuning in and miss Jacob's segment, Jacob, I, you wanted to educate me and the viewers about the history and the secrets of Villa and Sonics. All right, so the basic idea, there was Second a pattern that emerged in the course of the NAL previously. We had the qualifier in August was a lower bracket game that the Sonics were playing and they had Villa as their decider and they beat Mirage on it pretty handily. We went to the same map for a decider between Disrupt and SQ only a couple weeks back in stage two. It was the same case. Sonic still won that one. So I almost thought the key for Sonics, if you have to have a fallback plan, if you have to go somewhere, it's going to be Villa, but it betrays them just at the last moment. DG pull out a miracle win. I, I thought there was a trend. DG did a phenomenal job and proved me the hell wrong. They proved everybody wrong. They proved me wrong. But yeah. Jacob, the Sonic. They proved me wrong, which is why I was wearing the jersey for the joke, and then that happened. Just <laughs> there you go. Wait, wait. Didn't you miss your prediction this weekend? I think the curse is in full effect now, Veli. I don't know if the team there that I is. predict for the grand finals is about to have a chance if this is what it's going to do to me. Now, Jacob, I, I spoke to Jesse about Disrupt Gaming going to the finals, and it's your turn to talk about the Sonics. Yeah. What's next? We, I vouched for him before the season started. I, I believe it was June 22nd. I never forget. <laughs> um, and I said, I believe they're a top four team. That yeah. echoed along, along Twitter. It echoed on Reddit. Everybody was saying it because this team showed a lot of a lot of promise. You know, you can't argue with that. They did. But right now, would you call them a top four team? And if not, what do you have to say to them for them to get better? What do you need to see more of? Because when it comes to finishing these close rounds, it's like they always fall short. No, I can't matters. call them a top four team. I, 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 would, I would call them a top four team if they were able to qualify for the major. I, I can't call them a top four team because of their most recent performance. They did really good things in stage one. Yeah. Then they kind of fell off in stage two and things weren't nearly as in sync as they were before. And that same inconsistency did rear its ugly head as we went through the qual. We were honestly yesterday a little concerned that DG might actually beat the Sonics at several points because it went to overtime and it was so closely contested. Not the same case here. Sonics have to find a way to bounce back, and I don't know if their current formula will work out for them long term. It did originally. But I might be changing my tune on how well they're doing, though. You know, it's, there's a lot to say in there, and, you know, this is also considering the fact that they just came off of a series against Space Station, lost that series, jumped into another series against Disrupt Gaming shortly after, and almost squeaked away with the win. I mean, we can't be too harsh on them. We have to give them credit for, you know, what it's to do. But we just got the stats in. Shout out to Siege.gg. And wow, Jesse. Look at yeah. this. Numbers. You gotta love it. I mean, the craziest thing here is that the widest range in kills is 8 to 13. That's a 5 kill difference. That's almost nothing uh, in terms of Rainbow Six. We had just the last map. What was the difference? Like 0 kills to 16 or something crazy like that? Yeah. Maybe 1 or 2? I mean, things were neck and neck between not only just these teams, but every player in the server. Uh, you could tell that people brought uh, everything that they had. This was really one where uh, it went down to the wire. It's not often that NJR bottom frags on DG, but that certainly didn't <laughs> hold them back. You know, it, it doesn't even matter. They got yeah, the win. NJR exactly. did exactly what he had to do along with his teammates, and that has been criticism the desk has shared since the beginning of this season, and they've finally done it. But ladies and gentlemen, don't touch a browser. Don't go anywhere anytime soon because coming up next, we have the grand finals here. The qualifier to go to the NA Major. It's going to be a World Champs Space Station Gaming against Disrupt Gaming. And because of Shuttle, we got to show respect as he entered that finals game. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> 